What is this lighting? Mike, what is this lighting? What is this fucking lighting? Okay, no, 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 everybody stop, stop me. Demon mama, stop. Mama, stop. You're jumping in too strong, too quickly, okay? Let's find out. Let's not be judgmental, okay? Let's find out what the fuck happened. Let's hear what Mike has to say, then we'll go start at the investigation. Let's do it. Live, you are witnessing the, the drama mama investigation progress, and this is not a drama mama because I didn't get to pre prepare for it. Let's do this. Hello, everyone. My name is Mike from PA, and we are here to talk about Bo of the Fifth Column. Bo is a famous lefty YouTuber with over 600,000 subscribers, okay. known for his big unkept beard and his southern drawl. Bo has been growing in YouTube and becoming a larger and larger influence on how the left is perceived, both on this platform and in much of the discussions of leftism on the internet as a whole. Recently, I was disturbed to find out that he had a checkered history and he had and his past behavior in exploiting workers, vulnerable people, including female immigrants, young women. God, Mike has no charisma. I'm sorry, Mike has negative charisma. Hey, thank you so much, Bricks. I appreciate that a lot. 19 years old, brought here to work for less than minimum wage, and he personally profited. Bo has not shown any contrition whatsoever for these actions. Crave, thank you started, so much for these six gifted tier one subs. Really appreciate it. Bo is an ex-conservative, right? That would make sense. Yeah. Bo talked about this pretty openly. This video is not intended to cancel someone, to be a purity test, or do anything to damage the leftist community as a whole. I am making this video because I believe it's important that we on the left hold each other accountable, especially when one of our own refuses that accountability. Mm. For those of you crying that Bo has come redeemed, He's doing a glot of good for the left. A glot of good? First Wait, is this a pre-recorded video or was this on stream? This is so sloppy. And we must wrestle with is that for redemption and forgiveness to happen, one must show contrition. One must show remorse. One must show transparency and honesty. Bo has done none of those things. He continues to misrepresent what he did and why and who he was. And that is not acceptable for us on the left. What worries me most is that his voice is being advanced over others. Okay. While he has okay. personally profited from the exploitation of recent immigrants in some of the most vile ways you can exploit someone. Okay. So I acknowledge this is, this is my sta saying. Okay. All right. Ready? I acknowledge that Mike's production quality is garbage. That Mike here looks like a scary, greasy murderer. And that uh, Mike does not have the greatest track record of honesty. Okay? So, with that out of the way, I just want to... This is the thing. I want to get my insults out of the way at the beginning. Okay? Because my, just because Mike looks like he's going to kill all of us by wrapping his sweaty hands around our necks. Yes, he does look like Nosferatu. Even though he looks like a recently deceased corpse, it is actually possible, and I mean this unironically, it is actually possible that he has something here, okay? So, <laughs> hold on. I Listen, Gayfesh, I know it's mean, but everyone was going to be saying this. So I want everyone to get it out of their system now, laugh now, and then let's try and hear him out, okay? Let's try and hear him out. He does look like a deep fake of himself. Yes, that's true. Um, I agree. Okay. All right. We will look at this. We will look at the LA Times thing. We'll take a look. Don't worry. We're doing the investigation. You all here get to see get to see the level of quality that I always do. You know that I do this. You know that I always do a deep investigation. And even though I'm a... I'm a catty bitch sometimes, and I do think that Mike looks like the recently embalmed. Even though he looks like he could be the Scranton strang Strangler, 
from PA, from Scranton, PA, even though he looks like Dwight Schrute's fucking estranged cousin, okay? He might be onto something. Somebody's looks are not... Hey, Yuffie, good to see you. Uh, somebody's looks are not a good reason to discount their story. So, let's find out what Mike has to say, okay? We got it out of our system, okay? We got it out of our system. Mike Schrute. He looks like Ramsey Bolton's younger brother. Yes, uh, they would call him, um, what? There was um, Reek. Well, this is Greece, okay? There we go. That's a la He looks like, yeah, he looks like the son of Creed and Dwight Schrute. All right, let's give it a halt. All right, everybody, from here on out, let's let's listen and let's hear it out, okay? I am genuinely, I'm goofing on him because I do kind of think Mike is a silly person, but there might be some legitimacy to what he's saying, okay? So we're done now. From here on out, we're going to try and be fair to his story, okay? <laughs> I'm so sorry, Vermin. <laughs> And we are going to go over in detail, using both primary documents, the testimony of the women... Okay, one more, one more. I gotta read this one that Zovex said. I want to suck your subs! Okay, that's it. No more. No more. Enough! Stop! From here on out, we're doing serious analysis only. ...themselves, and the interpretations of both law and policy from a number of sources. I don't relish this, and I don't want to destroy anyone. But what I do want is that our cause to be advanced, the cause of the immigrant and the impoverished and the exploited to be uh, alleviated. I want to see progress in this country and this society. And that will not happen unless we start showing accountability and honesty for the exploitation and harm of the past. Now, before we begin, I want you to know what we're talking about exactly. And I'm going to go to Bo himself to show you what he says and who he is. Now, one of the questions that pops up, not one of the most frequently asked questions. Audio but levels. One of the questions that pops up kind of often. Thank you, Dread Battery. I have no fucking human clue. trafficker? No, of course not. That's stupid. A convicted alien smuggler. There is a difference. There is a So Bo is absolutely right that there is a difference. And we're going to explain why he has been called a human trafficker, not by me, but by many legitimate sources and organizations that try to combat human trafficking. Bo is right. He's technically right. Does Mike from PA, does Mike from PA watch YouTube videos in 4.3? No, okay, I said I wouldn't. I said I wouldn't. Okay, I said I wouldn't. Okay, I said I wouldn't. No more. He was only convicted of alien smuggling and fraud and deception of those that he smuggled. But if you look at the facts of the case, you will find that he wasn't some coyote fighting to help people escape uh, oppression as refugees. He was the most vile type of human trafficker. Somebody who brings people here under false pretenses and works them for sub-minimum wage, houses them in crowded conditions, and then exploits them for his own personal profit. I draw your attention to the United Nations definition on human trafficking. Human trafficking is the recruitment, transportation. Okay, I would argue that the most sinister form of human trafficking is human sexual trafficking. Like it, it, and maybe slave trafficking. Those are like the two. Like if you want to count that as human trafficking, I don't think that it's fair to say that like when you when, listen and here's what i'm trying to say i'm trying to be fair when you say the most vile form of human trafficking i don't think you helped somebody get in and then the place that they stayed in was like shitty i think you brought someone in to have as your personal sex slave so i don't really i don't really think that overstating harm there should be done but let's find out maybe there was some of that involved transfer harboring or receipt of people through force, fraud, or deception with the aim of exploiting them for profit. Men, women, and children of all ages- Pink Wug, don't worry. We're going to do all of this. We're going to get to the bottom of it. I promise you. And if chat is hating Mike too much, we'll, we'll, I'll call him out on it. I promise you.
We got it out of our system. ...and from all backgrounds can become victims of this crime, which occurs in every region of the world. The traffickers often use violence or fraudulent employment agencies and fake pro promises of education and job opportunities to trick and coerce these Well, victims. we'll find out, feudalist. I let's draw not, your attention to the fraudulent ourselves. employment agencies because that was what Bo did, and he made millions of dollars doing it. Thank this you so much, Zoe Vexed. Really appreciate who that. Bo is. Justin Eric King. Thank he you. was sentenced 41 so months much. in prison, followed by three years suspended release, resulting from his conviction on charges of conspiracy to commit visa fraud, visa fraud, and conspiracy to commit alien smuggling. The defendant and his co-conspirators brought illegal aliens, mostly from Bulgaria and Romania, to work in the hotel industry in and around Dustin, Florida. Okay. Justin Eric King, 27, of Chipley. So that's, uh, yeah, this is doxing, but okay. It is public record, but this is doxing. By tying, unless, as far as I know, Bo of the Fifth Column does not give out his real name on online. So, yeah. This is mild doxing, but it is still doxing. And that is where the trafficking comes in. The labor exploitation. Here, and in case you're wondering, here is a report. Yeah, I know, I know. But I, I, just, I just want to point this out for the purpose of the, of the record, yeah. Southern Poverty Law Center that cites his case called Culture Shock, the exploitation of J-1 cultural exchange workers. One of the things that Bo did is he exploited the J-1 visa. Well, what is the J-1 visa? They come to experience all America has to offer. They hope to pay their way by working a summer job as they experience a new culture and learn English. They work in our hotels, restaurants, fast food chains, and amusement parks. They're J-1 guest workers. The J-1 Visa Summer Work Travel Program. Hmm. Congress created this program 50 years ago to increase mutual understanding between the people of the United States and people of other countries by means of educational and cultural exchange. Okay. Foreign use pay American job placement agencies to, designated by the Department of State called sponsors to be placed with U.S. employers in jobs that offer cultural exchange opportunities and for trainees and interns professional job training. Now... Employers are using the program to fill labor needs, transforming a program designed to foster international goodwill into a source of cheap, exploitable labor. For the employers, the program offers a way to cut labor costs. Employers do not have to pay payroll taxes for J-1 workers. Okay. The savings an employer can realize by not paying an employee's Medicare, Social Security, or federal unemployment tax, around 8% of on this, its total payroll expenses, have led staffing agencies to promote the program as an inexpensive labor force. The sponsors and their overseas partners, the groups that recruit and screen participants, are reaping a windfall by charging J-1 workers hundreds or even thousands of dollars in fees to participate in the program. These fees are completely unregulated, and oh. students and their families often fall into debt to pay them and other travel expenses. See, now this, this is why I tried to say we should get our previous beefs with Mike out of the way, because this is a super inter this right here is a super interesting thing. This is how they get you. This is... This recruitment. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, this is a lot of how the um, the uh, cruise ship industry works. Debt leaves students vulnerable to exploitation. Faced with pressure to pay off loans, students and interns may opt to endure workplace abuse we'll find out, until they can we? return home. This is exactly what happened with Bo. He took in hundreds of women from Romania and Bulgaria and other places around the world and charged them thousands of dollars in fees in order to exploit them. And here it is. When these workers aren't on the job, they're often forced to live in overcrowded housing with other J-1 workers. They are frequently paid less than the minimum wage after their employer makes excessive deductions for housing, uniform, transportation, and other expenses. Some J-1 workers discover they must work a second job just to survive. But this is more than a story of debt and disappointment. By the way, just so you know, this happens. This I imagine that this happens to a horrific extent to J one workers. This also happens to American workers. You know how many workplaces make uh take make deductions for um, uniforms and equipment? So many. Most union workplaces force you to uh, deduct from your pay for uniforms, transportation, and or tools. It's ridiculous. I've ha I've worked multiple jobs where that was the case.
employment. It has some young students at risk of human trafficking. We'll find and out, other right? Nefarious we'll find out, activity. Jessica. We're doing all of this right now. Notice this footnote. That is USA versus Berman et al. This is the case of that convicted Bo of alien smuggling. Hmm. It was J1 SWT students used in labor trafficking scheme in the Florida Panhandle. Let's discuss Yikes. these charges even more in depth. Now you know what they were doing. They were exploiting young students and young women from Romania, Bulgaria, yeah, and Eastern you, Europe sorry. to come here and work. What exactly was the process? What were they doing? How was Bo <clears throat> profiting? Well, How was Bo exploiting out. them? Why was he charged with alien smuggling? What was the crime that he committed? This is the next document we're going to review is the Florida Strategic Plan on Human Trafficking from Florida State University. And this was paid for by the Florida Bar Association, the goal of which was to improve Florida law. Damn, this is wild. And examine the major human trafficking cases that took place. So this is the Destin King Thanks labor trafficking case. Thanks for the sub, Hossie 215. Really appreciate that. That is Justin King, or Bo. Okay. Labor trafficking is not confined to Florida's agricultural sector, but is increasingly found in Florida's hospitality and tourism industries as well. Yes, Late this, is ex this is extremely true, by the way. Um, this is the this is going to be the bow specific um, details, by the way, Alora. Um, this is uh, the ones. And just so you know, uh, so my ex, who I was with for a very long time, worked in um, hospitality in Florida. Um, thankfully, um, she was very lucky to work at a very nice hotel that did not have any issues with this um, explicitly. However, many many hotels do engage in this. Yeah. Labor trafficking these are not my words this is not my interpretation this is the view of the center for child welfare and the florida bar association this is the view of his activities the florida panhandle was the location of a criminal investigation that culminated in the 2008 conviction of both u.s citizen justin king and a number of russian nationals for smuggling aliens to work in florida resorts the Okaloosa wow. County Sheriff's Office had for several years been scrutinizing patterns of labor trafficking in the area of Destin and Fort Walton Beach. Beginning in as early as 1999, Russian nationals Anna, Alexander, and Stan began supplying young Eastern European men and women to Panhandle Resorts for janitorial and maid services. Operating under the name of Eurohouse Holding Corporation, they brought the Eastern European workers to the Florida Panhandle for short-term work on temporary J-1 or h2b visas now those j1 visas we talked about already those were the cultural exchange visas he also fraudulently created h2b visas which is our temporary work visas i do agree this could be prevented um wait mike is backtracking we'll watch that after we'll watch that after we're going to do all this then this is super interesting and super important so we're going to be looking into this for a while get comfy everybody this is going to be a fun stream and by fun i mean dark and by dark i mean uh we're learning about other bread tubers, so there we go. The vast majority of the workers were females between the ages of 19 and 23. Moreover, most were also students who were intent upon returning after several months to their homes in Eastern Europe to continue their studies. So the reason why I'm bringing this okay. up and why we are... So uh, I know people are saying you're not very comfy, but I need you to remember that these, that this event, regardless of what we're talking about so far... Um, this particular event happened many years ago. That doesn't mean that it's not bad, but this happened many, many years ago. So, uh, I recall, I've watched a lot of Bo's content, and I recall Bo talking explicitly about how he learned and rethought his worldview. A lot of people do a lot of bad work. Remember, there are a lot of leftists out there right now who used to be soldiers for the United States. People are not eternally, um, are, are, are not eternally damned for sins that they did when they thought a different way. Is there accountability? There should be, yes. But let's find out what the whole story is before we pass judgment. Going in such depth is one of the yes, lies been long before he was that Bo tells yeah. was that he was working as a private military contractor to rescue Jews from Uzbekistan and other, quote, exploited and dangerous, uh, exploited people. That he was the good guy. He was fighting against the man. He didn't believe in open borders. This when in reality, 
what he was this is a th this part right here is a little weird on mike's behalf this is editorializing that i don't think is necessary if he's if mike is honest um if mike is being honest here and not trying to to like cause shit this is question this this editorializing here is questionable convicted of was defrauding and exploiting vulnerable young women from eastern europe and we're going to get into those details this is disgusting behavior and he continues to lie and dissemble about this past. Many had been promised non-existent jobs when they were recruited in their home countries. Upon their arrival in the Florida Panhandle, they were instead employed for substandard wages by Eurohouse and assigned to work in local hotels and resorts. Eurohouse operated as we'll a labor subcontractor, providing services to hotels such as the Sandestin Hilton. Eurohouse was okay. able to offer the Damn. low bid on labor contracts precisely because they did not pay federal minimum wages to their employees. Bo brought women here with his co-conspirators and did not pay. I thought the that was federal men. minimum. Wait, hold on. Wage. I think he said I think they said it was men predominantly. Which at the time was seven twenty five an hour. They further charged the students between fifteen hundred and twenty five hundred each for visa processing, job placement, and transportation fees. Now do the math. If you're making seven twenty five an hour, and someone charges you twenty, okay, five hundred dollars. But thank you. That is an incredible amount of money. And when you look at the scale of what Bo did, it was hundreds of people. And it led to over $3.2 million in profit from these exploited workers. In addition, the young workers were charged to stay 15 to 20 persons per condominium through a variety of locations throughout the panhandle. So imagine this, coming to America under false promises, finding that the job you had been indicated you were going to work at didn't exist, and that you were charged $250 a month to move into a condominium with 20 other people. That was what he was doing. He was charging them $250 in rent per person and jamming them into an apartment with 20 other people. Yikes. This That's is pretty bad. despicable. Enforcement was carried out by verbal abuse, threats of violence, and threats of fines or non-payment of wages. So when the women came here, remember, majority of them, 19 to 23, they were kept in line by threats of violence and threats of fines and non-payment of wages. What would you call- For those who've just gotten back, we are currently investigating the latest allegations uh, towards Bo of the Fifth Column. Yeah. All this. Super Almost interesting. Almost all the young workers had a plane ticket allowing them to return to their home countries at the end of the summer tourism season. But they would have incurred substantial costs were they to try to fly home at an earlier date. The labor trafficking conspiracy overall proved lucrative and seemingly insulated from law enforcement oversight. Because the victims were exploited on a temporary basis, they most often simply chose to return home at the end of the summer without reporting the exploitation or participating in the investigation. That was the scam. These women were not brought here as refugees. They were not brought here as long-term migrants. They were brought here under false pretenses with false promises exploited and then sent home and the only person who was profiting was Bo and his co-conspirators the pattern finally changed in 2003 with the exploitation of a group of foreign nationals predominantly from bulgaria and romania with their assistance the okaloosa county sheriff's office discovered a further criminal conspiracy that involved even more extensive visa fraud and alien smuggling on the part of euro house officials now remember it's not just the alien smuggling he didn't just have people pay him to set up fraudulent visas. They brought them here and then they forced them to work for less than minimum wage. The ensuing investigation also revealed that US citizen Justin King, Bo, was employed as the front man for Eurohouse, negotiating new contracts with hotel owners and communicating with state and federal agencies to further their conspiracy. As part of his role in the criminal operation, King submitted over a thousand fraudulent visa applications. King and his co-conspirators were found to have brought in over 200 foreign nationals to work as hotel housekeepers through the use of these illegally obtained visa.
Evidence presented at trial showed that King and his co-conspirators had mm. used forged hotel letterheads to further their scam. Wow, damn. Most of the foreign national workers brought in through the fraudulent visa scheme were eventually contracted out to hotels and resorts other than those who had been supposedly sponsored them for their visa. Finally, it was revealed that when the federal government had become suspicious and stopped issuing visas to Eurohouse, King and the other defendants continued their fraudulent activity under the guise of a new labor contracting company called Woland. King was convicted on seven counts of visa fraud and alien smuggling and sentenced to 41 months in prison. His co-conspirators received 18, so 23, two, and 12 wait, months so, in prison. Wait, so, oh, damn, he got the most. Damn. So that's what? How many years in prison? Like three years in prison? 3.4 years? Damn. They were also found liable for a joint forfeiture of over a million dollars. Okay, so, so this is why it is human trafficking. Thank you, and he didn't really just bring these that people over for, a, for a fee. These were not people that were brought here to survive after difficult circumstances. These were not refugees. These were exploited workers who were brought here under false pretenses, paid below the minimum wage, and he pocketed over a million dollars. What the hell? That's possible, Lonnie. Curiously, well, he, it also human did, trafficking charges. Lonnie, were, it did say he was the front man, so he was he seemed to be organizing the the operation predominantly. Not was, part was of what the it prosecution. Said in this. And this is the point that Bo loves to say. That is why, at the beginning of this video, Bo pointed out that he had been convicted of alien smuggling, not human trafficking. Yes, but that's true and important. If Bo said that he did human trafficking charges then he would be admitting to a crime he didn't do. This is very silly. We'll, we'll get there. Quote, there is a difference. It's true. He wasn't charged with human trafficking. He was charged with alien smuggling and found guilty. But the facts are clear. He engaged okay. in human trafficking. The U.S. attorney for the Northern District of Florida would later note that the criminal behavior had, in fact, included all of the elements that would establish okay. forced labor under right. Title 18, Section 1589. In particular, the use of labor attained through false promises, through threats of serious harm, or through abuse of law or legal process, i.e. threats of deportation. This is not my view. Hmm. This is the view of the U.S. attorney. Why didn't they prosecute? I do not know. Federal prosecutors have complete discretion. And maybe they felt that it would be better and easier to secure a conviction of Justin if they didn't bring in the trafficking charges. For many people, trafficking is a, they imagine a kidnapped person, a person threatened with a gun, a person forced into mm. sex work. But that is not the only thing that human trafficking can mean. As we explained on the United Nations definition of human trafficking, it involves exploitative use of deception, threats, or profit. And that includes economic exploitation, like we saw here. The King labor trafficking case is a very clear indicator of the degree to which forced labor and abusive labor practices may have permeated the Florida hotel and tourism industries in recent years. The Eurohouse investigation furthermore revealed that numerous companies acting as temp labor staffing agencies are operating throughout Florida That's and the nation. That's a good question, Lonnie. Many of these agencies are owned and operated by people from Eastern Europe or states of the former Soviet Union. There appears to be a high degree of interconnectivity between the companies, strong indicators of organized crime and similar patterns of exploitation practiced by the suspect companies. Nice. Ongoing investigations of labor trafficking throughout Florida also demonstrate that U.S. citizens are increasingly involved in the exploitative practices. They operate what have been referred to as quasi-legitimate companies relying once again on the labor of foreign nationals who arrive on J-1 or H-2B visas. These labor leasing companies are recruiting laborers from countries not traditionally associated with providing workers for Florida's hospitality industries. The gaps in Florida law, because they are not subject, they are li unlicensed and these labor leasing companies in Florida are not subject to DBPR investigations or sanction. The Florida Labor Pool Act addresses day laborers but does not cover seasonal workers. And a similar gap exists in Florida migrant Damn, labor so nobody's laws. overlooking it. These gaps are the invitation for exploitative labor practices, and they need to be readdressed immediately by legislative welcome, and regulatory Gayfesh. responses. Hundreds of victims are estimated to be exploited annually in this manner throughout Florida. So thus far, we have examined the case. And it's not just from police officers or cops, but rather it's from the direct testimony of the women that are exploited. 
the women who had their paychecks stolen, the women who were charged exorbitant fees, the women who were not given paid overtime, even when they worked more than 40 hours. And Justin huh. King, Bo, knew about it. And so when he says he was just an alien smuggler, he is lying to you. And this is why he's refused to discuss the case, because he knows that the facts are damning. Here, I will draw your attention to okay. the direct testimony of one of the women who was exploited. Her name is Tanya. I can hear some of you right now objecting. Bo was just a paper pusher. He was filling out the visas as he was instructed to do. No, um, but here is my here is my one objection so far. My one objection is that Mike is making a big deal about whether it's human trafficking or whether it's uh refu whether it's alien smuggling, and I don't think that really matters all that much. So I don't really. I mean, it feels like it feels like Mike is hammering down on a very strange point, but. I mean, it is true. This sounds like some pretty shit stuff. It's the, it it's the green screen paperwork. stuffled up. Who cares about U.S. immigration law? It's unjust. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I believe in open borders and a just immigration yeah, policy. Yeah, that's, that's true, Zoe Vax. But no matter yeah. what our immigration policy is. Yeah, it's horrible. like Bo. That, that's horrible, but here's the thing. We are, yet, we are yet to determine. Yeah, it seems like Bo did his prison time. Yeah, so I don't know what the difference is between these two things. I'm trying to understand that. And the activities that they engaged with. I think Bo did a video on this, so permitted. we'll watch it. He exploited these young women. He stole their paychecks. And no, he okay. wasn't just a paper pusher. Okay. He was directly involved in every aspect of the criminal conspiracy, of the exploitation of these workers, of this class. Pressure. I know, I know, Samoski, I agree. I will draw your attention now to the testimony from Tanya, one of the many women... That he exploited well over 200 women from bulgaria and romania were exploited in this fashion i will show you her testimony and how king was directly involved in every aspect of the exploitation yes i did probably after a couple of months and i had been promoted as an inspector of housekeeping which is a supervisor of housekeeping inspecting rooms how much was your raise how much money i started getting eight dollars an hour eight an hour Nod's head. Your visa was scheduled to end in November of 2005. Did anybody at the Eurohouse offer to file some type of petition to get an extension on your visa? Yes, they did offer to file an extension. It's important here to look and see that she was supposed to be getting $8 an hour, but this next segment is incredibly important. It okay. shows the fraudulent scheme to pile fees and charges on these women to create a condition of peonage, of debt slavery, where they were forced to work for basically nothing. Who offered to file the extension for you? I spoke with Mr. Justin King and I spoke with Stan from Eurohouse. So I've been told they are offering extensions. They are going to provide for me. And I wanted to be loyal to my employer. I was thinking that was the right thing to do. I have a visa from them, so I should extend. So you were going to work longer at the embassy suites then? Yes. How much were they visa? going to charge you for the visa extension? They told me the extension was going to cost $1,154. Now, earlier we discussed the, the Southern Poverty Law Center report on the abuse of J-1 visas and H-2B visas, where the charge of fees, the costs, was completely unregulated. And King had no legal expertise, and he was committing fraud when he filed these applications. King had no Damn. legal experience. Okay. This charge of $1,154 right. was totally unregulated and totally hey, unwarranted. The purpose of which was to divert these... Yeah, we're looking into this right now. Uh, Denims, we are looking into the allegations against Bo, and our goal is to come out with, the, with a reasoned take. I'm happy to have you here um yeah so if you if you're not in the loop on this this is how you're gonna get in the loop on this yeah it does look like this is all publicly available orion um so far we have yet to establish why this stuff matters so much um if Bo already did his time and this was clearly from like 10 10 years ago well, it's not, it's not so much a matter of forgiveness, Lady Kelgana. We'll get there. We'll get there, okay? Let, we'll get there. We'll get there. Let's keep watching for now. Let's keep. Let's get the information first, and then we'll come King's to the conclusions. Own pocket. Now, in order for this visa extension to occur, did anybody bring you a new written agreement for you to stay on with Eurohouse for a longer time? Yes. Justin King bring me the new agreement, which I need to sign. That's the seasonal employment agreement that Mr. King brought you? Yes. And where did you? You said he brought it to you. Where did he bring this agreement to? At the housekeeping office. Okay, thank you. Thank Embassy you, Wendell B. Suites Hotel. 
So you were actually working the day he brought this to you? Yes. And it was Justin King that brought you Government's Exhibit 102? Yes, ma'am. Now, did Justin King, did he actually know through this offer and apply for it for a visa extension for you? Yes, ma'am, he did. Did he ever tell you that when he was applying for this visa extension that you weren't going to be the, able to work at the Embassy Suites where you were making $8 an hour and that you were going to have to go over and work at the blank golf resort? No. He never told you that you were going to have to change hotels? No. I'm not going, I'm going to show you what's already been introduced into evidence as Government Exhibit 104. Do you recognize this? Yes. That is my extension of my visa, which I did with Eurohouse. And this is the extension that Mr. King, King got for, I think you said you paid $1,154? Yes, ma'am. That's correct. Can you read the amount received on this document? Yes, ma'am. The petitioner, the listed petitioner here, ma'am, if you could read that and just tell me whether or not that says Rodenhouse, Eurohouse DBW blank resort. He never told you that you were going to change hotels? No. And one of the things that's important to notice okay, okay. is that not only was Mr. King totally involved with every aspect of this, he personally went to the hotels where these women were working at. He knew that they were being exploited. He knew how much they were being charged for these visa extensions. He knew how they were paying for it. How were they paying for it? Let the Tanya's continuing testimony paint you the picture. The first paycheck we have here says, the date down at the bottom, the pay periods 12-10-2005 to 12-23-2005. Do you agree? Yes, that's correct. And then 78.7 hours at $8 an hour, and this looks to be okay. your year-to-date total pay. Would you agree? Yes. And then this $629.60, there was an additional fees for $354. What were those additional fees that you were having to pay? Those are the withholding for my extension, which had been done not once, but three different checks. That was $1,154 for my extension, the visa. So they took it out over time? Yes. So after working 78.7 hours that month, you made a sum total of $210? and 60 cents that's correct just so we have a back of the envelope calculation she made only 200 dollars and 60 cents for 78.7 hours of work holy how shit. much is that per hour well if we do a calculation quickly that number is a mind-boggling two dollars and 68 cents an hour justin king Oof. charged this woman more for her extension than she ended up taking home and remember they were also charging that woman $250 in rent per month to live in a condominium with 20 Jesus. other people. I'm going, furthermore, it didn't just end there. They also committed un, uh, overtime fraud. When in the United States of America, when you work more than 40 hours a week, you have, must be paid time and a half for every hour after those 40 hours. That yeah, means we'll see, we'll if see. you were making $8 an hour like Miss Tanya, for the 41st hour, you're supposed to be making $12 an hour. That is federal law. In order to get around that requirement, Justin King created a second company to write a second paycheck. The first paycheck was from Eurohouse, the company that she, he ran. The second was from another corporation that was invented for the purpose okay. of paying her uh, Lady while Kogana, she didn't I'll know put that down about as our a overtime note. rules. What we'll about see. overtime, Ms. Oh, we're gonna get into all When you this. received paychecks from Eurohouse, were you provided overtime or time and a half? No. Were they break up your paychecks and put 40 hours on one? Yes, they were giving two separate checks. We were new in the country and I didn't know and they told me that's the way it has to be. Oh, sick, Dennis. And I was Dennis. thinking that was normal. Congratulations on the new couch, that's awesome. Better? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, I would like to enter exhibit 131A and B. Are these your paychecks? Yes, that's my paychecks. Did you Do you recognize that? Did you turn these paychecks over to the federal agents? Yes, I did. The first paycheck we have here says, the date down at the bottom, the pay periods 12, 10, 2005 to 12, 23, 2005. And then at 78.7 hours at $8 an hour, this looks to be the year, year to end date total pay. Would you agree? Yes. And then let's skip on down. This particular one says that you worked 80, 80 hours at $8 an hour for $604. Do you agree? Yes, that's correct. You had taken out sixty-seven dollars for federal withholding. Yeah, we'll find out. Yes. We'll find out. And then okay. let's go down to the bottom on this check stuff. On this particular one, it says you worked six point five hours at we eight have to hours get the an hour. First. Is that correct? Fifty-two dollars. Yes. Was that the same pay period? That twelve twenty-four. Yes. That is the separate check 
that I had been given on the same time, the same day, that gave me two separate checks. And this particular, the one that had your overtime hours, was that one purpose purportedly issued by a company in the name of AA Limited? Yes. And then your full-time hours, did they pay, did that pay stub say Eurohouse? Yes. You said Mr. King brought you the extension of your agreement with Eurohouse to the Embassy Suites. Did Mr. King yeah, know that you wild. actually Take worked at point. Embassy yeah. Suites full-time? Yes, he did. Who would give you your paychecks, Miss Tanya? Justin King the secretary of Eurohouse. Do you see the individual that you know as Justin King in the courtroom today? Yes, he's here. Your honor, if the record would reflect that she's identified the defendant. That is not the words of the government, not the words of the cop, but the words of one of the women who was exploited, who was charged thousands of dollars to be there, over a thousand dollars to get there, and another 1100 when she was there. Yeah, and then she was the reading is frustrating. 725 an hour, and forced to pay off those fees and rent. $2.68 an hour. No wonder Mr. King was able to go around to resorts and underbid other workers, we'll other out, companies huh? who are paying their workers full-time wages. That is who Bo is. That is exploitation. That is despicable. Now that you've heard how Tanya was exploited, you must keep in mind that there were hundreds of others in similar situations brought to the U.S. under false pretenses, paid sub-minimum wage, charged extreme rent in crowded housing conditions. And yeah, this isn't a neutral reading. So I little think that's clear. We'll, we'll do a review so of Mike's much. thing after Overtime this. Overtime okay? fraud. Don't worry, we're going to do it all. Additionally, unregulated You know, you got to trust me. We'll do it all. these women into sub-$3 It could be. We're going to find out, Captain. That is what they did. It might be. And it was very, very lucrative. After his conviction, Justin was forced to return over a million dollars that was exploited from these women imagine that a million dollars now let's see what justin says about this behavior how does he characterize what you have heard which is outright exploitation of vulnerable young women for his personal profit how does he describe it when he went on the lions of liberty right-wing podcast to know you a little when? bit better so tell us a bit about when? yourself i know you come when did he go on this podcast that is really important mike when did he go on this podcast from a, a background as a military contractor so how did you get from there to where you are now running this really amazing if i do say so myself uh news and commentary site hold on let's find out let's find out let's find out real quick w what's his name bo the fifth column justin king okay Let's see. Here we go. Found it. This was in 2016. This was five years ago. Five years ago. Yeah, we're going to do that, Snowdrift. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to go over everything today. I This was like wild, and, and my plans changed, so we're going to go into this. I didn't even know we were going to be doing this. Let's continue. So, well, 2016. I was a military contractor for about eight years. I did mostly non-governmental work. And at uh, one point, we angered the federal government, and I got my door kicked in. And I kind of realized at that point that I might have better uses for my skills. And that brought me to journalism, because I could shoot a gun and I could shoot a camera. So I started with Digital Journal, which is a small Canadian outlet. I moved okay. to the anti-media, and then the fifth column. Wow, let's just take a step back for a second. So can you tell us a little bit more about, I mean, I don't know how much you can detail, maybe legally, but what went on there with that whole incident there with getting your door kicked in? Was that because of something the company you were working for had done? Or you know, was that something that you were under investigation for? Can you detail that a little bit more? Well, basically, I worked for a company that did refugee recovery. We got refugees out of bad countries, whether it be Eastern Europe, Central Asia, wherever. We started working in Uzbekistan, and this much is my personal theory. Uzbekistan was a U.S. ally at the time. They were also really, really, really evil to Jewish people. We were getting them out, and uh, we were visited by State Department, and they told us to stop. And I don't know if you've ever met any military contractors, but when you say something like that to them, especially when they've already been paid, you're likely to get, you know, middle finger which is what happened so it's important to remind you that the j1 visa the cultural exchange wait wait wait, visa, wait, 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 wait wait mike mike hold on a second are are these referring to the same incident this sounds like he's talking about a different incident 
Yeah, this sounds like, hey, Blue Jazz, good to see you. Welcome to the live show. Uh, if you want to come to the website, demonmama.com forward slash live, you can get your chat up on the screen. Um, yeah, I think this is a different incident. This sounds like a different incident entirely. So, Mike, I think Mike may have made, made a dip, made have made, might, wow, holy shit. Mike may have made a mistake here. Was issued and regulated by the State Department. On the contrary to what he's claiming there, the State Department was aware that Eurohouse was issuing fraudulent visas using forged letterhead of hotels in order to get these women into the country. And they stopped allowing him yeah. to apply for visas under the company named Eurohouse. They formed a second fraudulent company called Roland, where they continued to file these visas. Of course he did. And uh, he wasn't doing it in Uzbekistan. He was doing it as part of an organized criminal conspiracy here in Florida, right okay. in his hometown. So, okay. So Mike has, this is, this is legitimate criticism for Mike here. No date on this podcast, which is a really important piece of information to know. And secondly, we don't even know if Bo is talking about the same incident. We don't even know if Mike and Bo are talking about the same incident here. There is This is massively lacking in context. And for a call-out video of this magnitude, that's pretty huge. I would love to hear more about these Uzbeki Jewish refugees because they are not mentioned at all in his criminal conviction. They are women from Eastern Europe, former... Mike, are you sure you have the same incident? Soviet bloc yes, countries this will be a segment, of Romania and Bulgaria. Yes. Not... Uzbeki Jews. This is, without a doubt, a lie. So what should we do with Bo? I don't know. I don't have all the answers. But what I do know is that we have an unrepentant human trafficker who is a major figure on the left here on YouTube. He goes around and lies about the behaviors that he perpetuated. He does not explain. Yeah, we just heard he about that, Castrick. So we're trying to figure and it out. We're trying to get concerned. to the bottom of it. We cannot have someone advanced on the left, promoted by Google, promoted by the algorithm, promoted by now this, who is somebody who has exploited people like this. Imagine the damage that will be done to the movement if people find out that one of the most prominent voices on the left was a human trafficker and who exploited hundreds of women for his own profit. We cannot complain about the labor conditions at Amazon. We cannot complain yeah, about exactly. the actions Pink of book. people like Matt Gates. if we allow this to go unanswered and underresponded. As I've shown you multiple times in this video, Bo is not forthright and is not contrite. For redemption to occur, and I believe in rehabilitative justice, I believe in redemption. I believe in forgiveness. But in order for forgiveness to take place, remorse, genuine remorse, and accountability must be shown. And that is not what has happened with Bo. Bo has gone and misled people about the details of this case. He has refused to discuss further his background and how much he personally profited. As I think I've demonstrated clearly in this video, no matter what you may think of the presenter, Bo is the person who has profited personally from the exploitation of literally hundreds of people, paying them sub-minimum wage, forcing them into crowded apartments with up to 20 people at a time. And he made, and his co-conspirators made. That is unacceptable. And we must reckon, if we are going to be advocates for immigration, what for advo there? advocates for the This video is very, very questionable. Advocates for edited. people that are okay. oppressed. Jesus. We must hold our own accountable. Oh boy. Bo, you must respond. Okay. Okay. All right. Link to sources quoted, please. Many sources. I wouldn't expect much else. Wow, this is definitely um, this is definitely causing some controversy. That's where the that's where the fucking video ends. Okay, so real quick, here's what we have yet. Let's, in fact, you know what? Let's do a little bit of notes here. Let me just get these notes up. Any note takers in chat? All right, here we go. Ready? Okay. One, things we need to establish. Did Bo 
serve his time. Two, is Bo unrepentant, as Mike claims? Three, is the Uzbekistani Jews story the same, uh, a separate story? Why did Mike not clear this up? And what else? Four. What else do we need? Is there any other questions we need to do this? Yeah, I always write notes in Sublime. I love Sublime. Hey, Thought Slime. Good to see you. How are you doing? Thought Slime, come to the website. If you come onto the website... Oh, hey, Camazots. Y'all both come to the website. On the website... um, Here, come to the website. I'll give you both uh, creator names. Yeah, come on in. Come on in. Uh, it's the website is right. Yeah, the website's here. Wait, oh, God damn it. My command's not working. Site. There we go. There it is. Demonmama.com forward slash live. If you come in here, just ping me and I'll give you guys fancy names. Okay. Let's continue. So here's what we need to determine. Um, happy to see you both here. Um, so did Bo serve his time? We need to determine this, whether he did or didn't. Is Bo unrepentant? We need to determine that. We need to determine whether the Uzbekistani J Jews story was a separate story or the same story. It sounds to me like it's a completely different story and that Mike just claimed that it was, which is a little bit strange. And then four, what is the goal slash purpose of the call out if... Uh, we answer answer the above questions okay Dorian the cutest this is uh, there have been allegations um, there have been allegations against bow of the fifth column and we are going to um, we are going to try and sort this out Mike from PA has done an expose. This is a pretty major thing in these spaces, so we want to get to the bottom of it, and it's developing right now. So I figured we better weigh in. So we have another video that's up next, okay? This is Bo's video from this morning titled, Let's Talk About Me. Okay? So first... Is Mike from PA a lizard person? I have no idea. <laughs> Zots, wait, is that really you, Zots? Don't, don't call him a lizard person. He's not a lizard person. No. Wait, what is this? Is this a reference to something I don't understand? Uh oh. Well, we'll find out. Let's find out. Okay, so first of all, how do we... Okay, okay. He doesn't actually talk about it. Well, let's watch it. Let's watch this video. Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today is going to be a little different. Today we're going to talk about me, something I normally don't do on this channel. Um, I try to make this channel about ideas, not the person presenting them. The story starts months ago, from what I understand, I think before the election. Um... But I don't know the story is taking place yet. A non-government organization saw my content. They're like, we can use this. And uh, they started paying to have it run as like ads. When people would search for They're basically for the same thing, aren't bad. they? When they would search for... Mike from his mouth? Oh, come on. We can't be that mean from this level. Oh, group. Jesus. Or a militant group or when they would search for how to do something horrible. They would see my smiling face. They'd see that thumbnail, the idea. They click on it, they watch it, and uh, they get de-radicalized. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, now, over the years, I've gotten messages from some of you saying that you know, you were on a bad road, and my videos helped get you off of it. And to me, those were the wins. That's what really mattered. Actually creating uh, 
some change there. So a couple months ago when I find out this is happening in a group that is dedicated to de-radicalizing people, find out they were using my content, man, I was uh, flattered, very proud. A little taken aback at first because nobody had asked me <laughs> if they could use my content, but to be completely fair on this one, had they come to me and said, hey, this is what we're going to do, I would have said yes. Hmm. I would have said yes. I think it's amazing. I think it's a great program. Um, I wanted to make a video about it then when I found out it was going on, but I couldn't. I made a tweet about it, but I couldn't make a video. Because in order for this to work, it has to at least somewhat appear organic. You know, if you were searching this, for maybe he's talking about something horrible, else. And uh, my video helped get you off that road, and you continued watching videos, and then you stumbled across one that says, "Hey, that thing that happened to you, that was totally intended." You might feel tricked. It might undo the good that was done. So I couldn't talk about it as much as I wanted to. Couldn't make a video. I couldn't imagine anybody not wanting a program like that to uh, succeed. Okay, I think this is where it ties in. I mean, it's amazing. The idea of using just ads and content that already exists to stop violence, to save lives. I don't see how that could be a bad thing. But apparently there are some. There are some. Because a whole bunch of information started getting pushed out about me. Okay. Now, I don't know. I don't want to assign a motive. I don't know if it was directed specifically at me or it was an attempt to delegitimize and undermine the program. I don't know which. Huh. I don't really want to speculate. But uh, information started getting pushed out about me. Some of it's silly. He plays up his accent. And we've talked about it. Sometimes I do. I did a whole lot in the beginning. Um, to stuff that isn't quite so silly. Everything from my past use of inflammatory rhetoric to everything I have ever done or been accused of. And some stuff that I was never accused of. All got pushed out there. Okay. Okay. If you don't know, even though we've talked about it on the channel, 10 years ago, 12, 13, but a long time ago, I got busted for alien smuggling. I know, shock, right? I guess this was, uh, the idea was to paint it that this program shouldn't use people like me with that background. Which leads to the idea that the people who can reach this was made, but this was made implicitly in response. Searching for how to do something violent are clean cut people with no background. I don't know that that's true. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. That's true. It seems like there should be some kind of relatability. You know, if it was just clean cut people talking about doing good and all of that stuff with a slightly paramilitary vibe that worked, well, we wouldn't have extremists. We'd have a whole bunch of people in the Boy Scouts. It's not the real world. I, I, I think there does need to be some kind of relatability. Um, now, if this push was aimed at me and getting me out of this program, congratulations, you won. My content is no longer being used for this. Okay. So, okay. now we have something that resulted from the video Mike made. Okay? So, Bo's content is not being used as a part of this program, according to Bo. I do seem to recall... Um, okay, let's take a look. All right, let's take a look. Yeah, I already did the pl Tyler Bluntman stuff. Linky, zoom back to the beginning of the VOD if you want to catch it. Uh, I'm quite proud of that segment. We'll be releasing that as a video soon. Quite proud of that that segment. So, 
Give me just a second to clean my glasses. Okay, we'll do this real quick here. Let's grab this. Let's take a look at the LA Times article on this. Let's take a look. Effort to stem extremism accidentally pushed people towards an anarchist. The idea began as a bait and switch. Give people searching online terms like join Oath Keepers or bomb instructions some content that seemed to fit their request, but instead offered an alternative to extremism. The method developed by Moonshot CVE. I remember him talking about this. Through partnerships with Google as well as the ADL, the British firm's goal is to dissuade users from pursuing conspiracies and violent rhetoric by luring them with advertisements to other sites. It's just one of a dozen of ideas that tech companies are experiencing with in the wake of the sixth capital insurrection. insurrection. They come under increasing pressure. An internet figure known as Bo the Fifth Column, Moonshot thought it had found the perfect person. Broadcasting under a bare light bulb from a shed packed with camping gear, Bo appeared as a southern gun owner with progressive views. He had a calming demeanor, unkempt beard, military aura, and a huge YouTube following. But Bo, whose real name is Justin King, so he's definitely been out, had a history of supporting anarchism and making statements that seemed to many anti-Semitic. He's also a felon. So he did serve his time. We've concluded that. We can answer that now. The fiasco over Moonshot's redirect experiment came to a head last week in Washington as federal legislators grilled the chief executive officers of Twitter, Facebook, and Google about extremism. They sent people who were already looking for violence to a convicted felon with anarchist and anti-Semitic views, Republican Virginia said to Sadar Picacci during a House hearing. It raises one of the key questions about moderating online platforms. Who is vetting the vetters? Oh, my God. We need we continue to need more transparency and accountability. Okay. So he's not anti Semitic. I'm very anti authoritarian. Okay, so we don't see anything like this. His he views anarchy as an ideal, but he is not the type to be throwing rocks at cops. I would love a stateless society where everyone gets along. Whose real accent is less pronounced than that of his beau persona. Oh come on. Okay, so this is a super biased article. We are comfortable working with people who have checkered histories, but we like to know about it. In this case, our system missed some of those elements from his past. It highlighted a gap. Okay. Okay. So currently, basically, uh, it looks like right-wing legislators are trying to shut down this program. I wonder why. I wonder why. Now, it is a little weird that Mike would be siding with the Republicans on this one. Yeah, so he's probably addressing this, not Mike's video. Thank you for that, Pinkwug. Oh, yeah. Let me put a note here. We have determined that Bo served his time. Yes, Bo served his times. Let's find out if Bo is unrepentant. That's our next question that we need to determine. But to me, it's not about me. I don't care about dragging my name through the mud. Um, it's about that program. That program is still going. And it doesn't matter what your goal was, you're going to fail. I will still be right here making videos. I got messages from people who got off a bad road from my videos before this program ever started. I will get them after. That program, it will continue. And it will continue to do good. Hmm. And even if you were able to undermine it to the point that it stopped... 10 more would spring up in its place because there are enough people who are tired of the division, who are tired of the violence, and they will use whatever tools they have available to make it stop. And apparently, ads are a good way to do it. Didn't change anything. On a long enough timeline, our side wins. Guaranteed. Now, if you were one of the ones who pushed this information out there for whatever reason, congratulations. You won. You succeeded in removing a tool to d 
to radicalize people Best of who luck, Crabe. were Sorry searching for how to do something violent. Remember that next time something horrible happens. I hope the clicks were worth it. I'll be right here. If you have any questions about my views on anything, I have 1,300 okay. videos recorded over the last couple of years, and I will let my record speak for itself. Anyway. No, they didn't it's discontinue just a the whole one. Y'all have a good day. All right. Hold on a second. One more thing we got to find out, okay? All right. So, Bo of the Fifth Alien Trafficking. Let's find out. I want to find, I want to find his video where he talks about this. So, it would be great if Mike from PA had given us the link to the video. But let's see if we can find it real quick. Because I want to, again, I really want to get Hello, everyone. to the bottom of this and give this a fair shake. You know me. Let's talk about 100,000 subscribers and me. Okay. Let's talk about 100,000 subscribers and me. All right, this is Bo. All right. Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. And let's look. Wait, hold on a second. Here we go. One second. One second. Hello, everyone. My name is Mike from PA. and we So it looks like he talks about it about a third of the way in. So we're going to go there. We're going to go there, and we're going to go about a third of the way in here. We're going to watch this. Let's do this. Let's get to the bottom of this. Justin is my given name, by the way. I also go by Mick. Um, and uh, throughout the videos, there are uh, let's find out <laughs> kind of head nods and little inside jokes to my, my, <laughs> my core readership. Um, in fact, in the most recent one, you guys on YouTube will have seen this one, where I was uh, on the border, pretending to be on the border. Get that idiot Justin on the phone is a line in it when I was talking about Benghazi, and I was like, you know, they couldn't control their client. It happens. That is also a little nod to people who, who know me, know a little bit more about me. Um, so, in the beginning, I really played up the accent. And as time went on, I kind of walked it back to my real accent. What you hear now, that's pretty much how I talk, except during the satire videos, because I do tend to play it up during those because, well, it's funny. Um, okay, so now you're kind of caught up. Now, I know on YouTube you may not have ever seen the real heavy accent because I think it started, that channel started after hmm. I stopped using it. Um, but it's out there. Uh, now, the immediate follow-up questions to this are, you know, are you really from the South? Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm really I'm gonna from the going to get there. Um, Georgia, Alabama. I went to a high school, lived just outside of a town, really from the South. Now, one of the questions that Let's see. pops up, not one of the most frequently asked questions, but one of the questions that pops up kind of often, am I a convicted human trafficker? Okay. No, of course not. That's stupid convicted alien smuggler there is a difference there is a difference um okay i know about the blog i, I i've read it it is entertaining um, uh no the article was but important tweet for this okay let's look at the tweet i'm curious was whatever that business was congruent what it was whatever that business was congruent with your stated ethics my ethics today no no it was more than a decade ago. The me of today would curb, curb stomp the me of a decade ago for a whole bunch of things. This was today. Okay. Good to know. Good to fucking know. Thank you. Holodor, thank you. Let's continue. Most of what is contained in it, like 95%, is utterly false. Fact check it. Fact check it. I know there's a theory <laughs> that I wrote it as kind of a teaching tool because I am known for going over the top to prove a point as much as I would love to claim credit for that that's not true that was put out by somebody in 2013 who was uh, operating at the behest of somebody who was angry because I wouldn't interview them uh, 
That's where that came from. The reason I never sent a letter, because it is plainly libelous, um, the reason I never sent the letter is because it is a good teaching tool. It shows exactly how uh, the use of official documents and putting them in a false context can easily lead the reader to believe something that isn't true, to okay. draw the wrong conclusions. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, you know, I'm just <laughs> starting at the top of it. No, that's not the right charge. No, I didn't take a deal. You know, um, okay. no, I, I didn't get out in an abnormal amount of time. I didn't get a short sentence. All of this stuff is easily fact checkable. Okay, let's fact check it. Let's fact check it live. Average sentence for alien smuggling. Penalties for smuggling an alien in the U.S. Can, can include bringing or attempting to bring, bring an alien into the U.S. 10 years in prison. Transporting or harboring an illegal alien for profit. 10 years in prison. Transporting or harboring an illegal immigrant not for profit. 5 years in prison. It looks like he did f 41 months. The average sentence length according to the U.S. Oh, here we go. Wait a second. This is a document. Hold on a second. How do I, how can I open this? Uh, I would like to open this here. Uh, fuck. Okay, here, I'll download this. Here, let's take a look. This is bought from the U.S. Let's take a look. Yeah, one second here. Let me just make sure I got this up here. One second. All right. So. Okay, hold on. Here we go. The average sentence length for alien smuggling offenders is 18 months. 18 months. So he did 41 months while the average was 18 months. That is an important distinction to make in, these, in this case. So did Bo serve his time? Yes. The average sentencing length is 18 months. And Bo served 41 months. Is Bo unrepentant? No. He has expressed explicit uh, disdain for his previous beliefs and approach to life in addition to serving his time in prison. Hey, blank faced, chill, chill. We'll talk about this. Let us finish the segment. Jesus fucking Christ. I don't know if that's a per count average. That's a good question to ask. Here we go. Looks like it's pretty average. This is the guideline minimums. It looks like it's just about the same. Sentence relative to the guideline range. Most are within. Most sentences are within. No, I don't think so, Lonnie. I don't think so. They came in before uh, Twitter, before, before Thoughtsline was here. I don't think so. Okay, so here we go. Okay. All right, let's continue. That sentencing history is kind of sad, is it? I mean, it could be, but I mean, we don't know. That's the wait, wait, executioner. For all we know, I mean, that's this. This appears to be this document I have here is the U.S. government average. This is based off the Fed. This is from the federal government. Overall, it looks like it might be more severe in Florida. Some of this, some of this is going to be a little hard to determine exactly, but we can try to get fucking in. We can try to get information. Also, keep in mind that 
That was based on 2014. Okay? Okay. So, let's continue. Let us continue. Okay? We need to continue here. Where is this? There we go. Let's hear the rest of this video before we move on to the next piece. I know there are people that want to know about it. Um, no. <laughs> no. Um, it's irrelevant to what I'm doing today. And I know to you guys it's interesting. To me, it is something that happened more than 10 years ago. Okay, um, so it happened 13 years ago? I'm also myself in the position of defending myself in the comment section against any baseless accusation that comes along. So, no. Um, I'm not sure if I can even figure that out. We could try. That, I'll try. Questions I'll try, Executioner. That. And I know it. I can give a little bit of insight. Yeah, I was a consultant, contractor, whatever term you want to use. I don't really care. Um, I was always a civilian. This is something that comes up pretty often. Always a civilian. That doesn't mean your buddy lied to you, though. Um, your buddy may just have not known who I was. <laughs> there are a number of people who are like, you know, hey, well, my friend met you here. Maybe, maybe he did. But I wasn't active duty, ever, ever. Um, okay. There are people who are like, you know, my friend says he, you were in this unit. No, I wasn't. I wasn't may have been physically present with people who were from that unit. I was never in that unit. I was always a civilian. Always. Right now, there are people from that community going, Oh, <laughs> you're one of those guys. No, I'm a literal farm boy, not a figurative one. I was never part of that organization either. Uh, people want details about that and what I did and stuff like that. Whatever the public record says is... Okay, so this is not relevant anymore. So... Uh, he says he doesn't want to talk about something that happened 13 years ago that he served his time for. I think that's kind of reasonable, okay? Listen, I recognize that, uh, that like, doing a bad thing is, is like, obviously important. But, like, but, y'all, I don't know if you know this, but prison is traumatizing. Like, literally, we talk about prison abolition and reform all the time. Prison is especially in the u.s akin to torture we have no idea what he personally might have experienced there so what i'm saying is that it makes sense that somebody who served their time hey thank you bricks really appreciate that thank you so much um yeah so you know, I think it makes sense that someone who served their time might not want to spend a lot of time talking about their time in prison. We have no idea what he might have experienced. He might have experienced beatings. Statistically, he may have experienced sexual assault. On a pure statistical level, that's very likely. Yeah, If he lives in Florida, he can't even vote. Yeah, it's torture. Yeah, I agree. So we're not quite done yet, though, because we got to see some of the other stuff that's happened. Like okay. That. All right. Let's talk about this. Okay. So we don't know about the Uzbekistani Jews story. We would need to ask Bo of the fifth column for this one, I think. Oh, okay. Okay. Let me check this. At 7.15, uh-oh. Okay. When you're on our website, you see a report that says Gaza. The guy that wrote it was in Gaza. Max Let's find out. I could get, which was like 41 minutes. Meanwhile, some 19-year-old kid that drove uh, two pounds of pot across state lines and had a shotgun in his car is doing five years. It's messed up. It really is. <laughs> wow, yeah. So what inspired you to do this then? Instead of going back into contracting, you started this cool ass website, uh, <laughs> which really I have come to hmm. know of uh, through Dan Johnson of the Solutions Institute, as well as uh, Brian Engelman. We're all kind of connected here in some ways. And uh, it, it... international alien smuggling conspiracies they'd ever busted. And I got pretty much the 
fascinating thing to think about that um even within the prison system there's places you'd rather be right there's definitely i mean one of the things that blew my mind was from from the federal government standpoint i was involved in one of the largest international alien smuggling conspiracies Ally Menthol says, I'm here to warn you from someone who's lived through today so far. The mic drama is going to keep going until it literally collapses the universe into a black hole from the mass of his own ego. Damn. All right. Well, we'll find out, right? Hold on. Let's hear. Receipts they'd ever busted. And I got pretty much the max. And Nothing else I would imagine. Yeah, it definitely made me, uh, I think, if anything, it made me even more patient. There's not a lot to do. Luckily, companies that lasted a year and then got shut down you know, back and forth. And yeah, sometimes it is. I mean, if I understand, you know, I didn't deal with the money, but if I understand correctly, I do believe a synagogue hired us to uh, get the people out of Uzbekistan. Let's find out. That's really fascinating. So did your arrest in that situation, is that what kind of led you out of that career? Was it impossible for you guys or out of the company or yourself to function once you were under the ire, I guess, of the federal government? All right, oh, let's, no, let's no, play. No. Let's play actually... the full work. Because we're doing fucking journalism here, we're listening to the full context, okay? Definitely. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> a few weeks later, we all had our doors kicked in and all got arrested. Wow. So when you are a military Tanner, contractor I don't think that's fair. in a situation like that, who's hiring you? I mean, because from my perspective, I think military contractor, I think that you're being hired by the U.S. government. But obviously, they were adversarial to what you were doing. So what's that whole arrangement there? Well, there are, there are three kinds of contracts got white contracting, which is what everybody thinks of. Blackwater, you know, companies like that that work for the U.S. government and as an arm of the U.S. government. You have black contracting, which is like murder for hire, you know, smuggling drugs, stuff like that. And then you have gray contracting, which is where you're working for a church, a synagogue, a private company, anybody that, you know, raised the money. And that's where I fell in line most of the time, just right there in the middle. That's so fascinating to me because I honestly didn't even know what you're describing existed. Because <laughs> now I'm picturing like, you know, a church of nuns going out and then having a clandestine meeting with uh, some, you know, guy in dark sunglasses and, a, you know, a black jacket and handing him a, a briefcase full of cash to go save some refugees. So that's a, it's really intriguing. And maybe I don't know how far off that is from the reality, probably somewhat, but that's really interesting. So is that the kind of work you primarily did, sort of um, that gray area, I guess you might call it? Yes. Yeah, I did that. I did some bodyguard work, surveillance, that kind of stuff. But the vast majority of it was the gray contracting working for companies that lasted a year and then got shut down, you know, back and forth. And yeah, sometimes it is. I mean, if I understand, you know, I didn't deal with the money, but if I understand correctly, I do believe a synagogue hired us to uh, get the people out of Uzbekistan. That's really fascinating. So did your arrest in that situation, is that what kind of led you out of that career? Was it impossible hmm. for you guys out of the company or yourself to function once you were under the ire, I guess, of the federal government? Oh, no, no, no. That's actually expected. Um, most people- <laughs> it's part of the job. <laughs> yeah, most people actually maintain two Rolodexes, those people in prison, those people out. Wow. Now, I had a job offer two weeks after I got out. I had a job offer to go to Seattle and work doing something. I don't remember. I turned it down because I was pretty much done with it at that point. Wow. So you actually served time for this then? Oh, yeah. Three years. Wow. Oh, my God. So that's got to change you quite a bit, spending three years behind bars, or at least you know, gives you time to think of nothing else, I would imagine. Yeah, it definitely made me, uh, I think, if anything, it made me even more patient. There's not a lot to do. Luckily, I spent my first little bit in like actual you know, prisons, but the last couple of years I spent at the Montgomery Federal Prison Camp, which if you have to go to prison, I highly recommend it. Uh, tennis courts. I had a dog. There's no fence. <laughs> It's when people say club fed, that's the place that they need it. It was a joke. And most of the people there were the ultra wealthy. It gave me a good view of the uh, disparity in the justice system. Oh, yeah, I had a guest Oof. on um, earlier, well, I guess last year now at this point, Michael Santos. He actually spent 27 years in federal prison. And you know that was always what he mentioned, how that was the goal, to get to club fed, to get to the camp. Because that's where you're not free, obviously, but you're as close to free as you can get while still serving out a prison sentence. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, it's the, the Wall Street guys, you know, the guys that have money, the guys that are committing white-collar crimes that get there. But in the meantime, you have all these other extremely nonviolent people, people that were arrested for drug possession or selling drugs and that kind of thing. It's very difficult for those guys to get in there, even without a violent pass, until the, the very, very, very end of their sentence. And some of those sentences are extremely long, multiple decades, if not for life for some of these guys. So, uh, yeah, it's really, uh, it's really a fascinating thing to think about that um even within the prison system there's places you'd rather be right there's definitely i mean one of the things that blew my mind was from from the federal government standpoint i was involved in one of the largest international alien smuggling conspiracies they'd ever busted and i got pretty much the max sentence i could get which was like 41 minutes meanwhile some 19 year old kid that drove uh two pounds of pot across state lines and had a shotgun in his car is doing five years it's messed up it really is <laughs> wow, yeah so what inspired you to do this then? Instead of going back into contracting, you started this Well, thank you, cool Castrex. I appreciate uh, that. Which really I, I've come to know of, uh, through Dan Johnson of the Solutions Institute as well as uh, Brian Engelman. We're all kind of connected here in some ways. And uh, it, it really is a, a very professional-looking website, I would say. And I think the type of reporting and the type of columns there are also sort of on that level. So okay. how are you able to put such a— Okay, so this does appear—it does appear to be that he is either intentionally anonymizing or somewhat downplaying— 
uh, or at least fabricate fabricating his approach in this in this particular video, which was from five years ago. Okay, five years ago. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna take a couple of notes down here. So one. So we've determined this. Mike was correct in claiming that he misdescribed what he was charged for. No. It appears Mike's allegation was correct here. At least on the surface. All right. Credit to Mike. Yeah. Credit to Mike. Five years ago on the... Uh, what was it called? Loyal Lions? Lions of Liberty? Can I expound? Yes. So, on this video, this is the podcast which Mike referred to about the story of Uzbekistani Jews that he was rescuing. Now, we've listened to the full context, and he said that he received... Now, I will say, okay? I will say... He was being, um, he was being unclear because he said he worked. Now, keep in mind, he said he worked as a contractor and that one of his jobs as a contractor was rescuing Uzbekistani Jews. And then he said he also, another job, he got 41, or, or he didn't really say whether it wasn't a job or whether it what or sorry hold on he didn't completely explain whether this was the same job that he got 41 months for which is three years approximately well three years and four months okay so he was vague that is possible as well carpe pax from twitch chat brings up a good point which is uh those those who maintained uh someone who maintained their innocence throughout an entire trial is under no obligation to admit to the charges later or advertise them as if they admit them it is also possible there is an nda related to the prosecution or the job that is also true he could be sort of having to anonymize if that's the case five years ago on the lines of liberty Bo misrepresented, we'll say that's fair, the nature of his case, okay? Uh, it's the, it's the lines, Castrix. It's the lines. It's above, it's these ones. It's lines, like that, okay? Yeah, that article says it was Bulgarians. Yeah, we know. Yeah, that was the thing. It was Bulgarians or Romanians. So it sounds like he was anonymizing, but he was n anonymizing it in a positive way, right? Like, let's be real. Let's be fair here. He was anonymized. He misrepresented it favorably to himself. Rescuing versus exploiting okay this is i think this is fair okay this is is this is a fair thing to say he misrepresented it favorably to himself okay now let's talk about everything we found out so far okay can the podcast be linked yes here you go here's the full podcast if anybody would like it there you are Okay. Okay. Here's the official one from the archive if you want the official one. There you go. All right. Then, of course, we have this tweet, which I'm going to screenshot because these things always get deleted, and I would like to have this just in case. Okay? Screenshotted. And I'm going to put this down right here. We're going to keep this. Okay. Ah, oh, shit. I didn't mean to do that. Fuck. Here's what I needed. Okay. Doo doo fart. Whoops, wrong thing. Okay. All right, there we go. Okay. So, 
Let us continue with this. Oh, sorry, Humphead. You're all good. We just didn't, I just didn't notice. Okay, here we go. Let's talk about this before we watch any of the drama-related content, before we move into the drama part of this. Let's figure out what we think about this. Okay, so, Bo, sometime in the ballpark of 15, 10 to 15 years ago, um, so, so 10 to 15 years ago, Bo was involved pretty heavily in a human trafficking scheme. He wasn't convicted of human trafficking, but we can tell that there was enough evidence to say this was a human trafficking, uh, uh, um, operation, even if he wasn't convicted of that. Okay. We can acknowledge that, you know, from a non-legal perspective, this was, it would be fair for, for any average person to conclude that was human trafficking, okay? Any average person could conclude that. We don't, we're not up to, we don't need to be 100% legal standards here for the purposes of what we're talking about. He then was convicted, heavily, heavily fined, and was also sentenced to prison for 41 months. During that time, he claimed that the first year he spent in a maximum security prison. And then the last two, he moved to a not so bad prison. Okay. All right. So we answered the question, did Bo serve his time? Yes, he did. He served his time. He didn't take any deals. We have no evidence that he ever took any deals or anything. Oh, boy. So Mike's got another video. We will watch that in a minute then. Okay? Okay. That's great. Awesome. All right. We'll get to this. We'll get to that. We got a lot. To, we got a lot. This is live developing drama. You all are here for it. You all are here for it. You know you are. Actually, to be honest, we've actually bled off some viewers from YouTube, and we've gained viewers on Twitch, which is a little bit weird. But okay. It's all good. It's all good. We're still pulling quite a lot. No spoilerino for the other vid. Okay, we'll watch it. No, we got to talk about this. This is fucking important, okay? All right, we'll watch it, okay? Okay. Hold on a second. Secondly, is Bo unrepentant? No. We don't seem to have, oh, you do, law boy. And it's law, it's legal drama, law boy. It's right up your alley. It's legal drama today. This episode was basically made for you, law boy. You got to go back. Go back and watch it on two times speed and then catch up. Seriously, you, it's just made, it was made for you. Somebody just said about 10 minutes ago that, that we wish you were here. Literally, people were like, I, we wish law boy was here. Now you're here. Happy to have you. All right. So, part two. Is Bo unrepentant? It doesn't appear to be the case. From all evidence, except for that one podcast from five years ago, okay? From five years ago, he was... He misrepresented himself in a favorable light, okay? Okay. Okay. But just today, we have evidence from today and from his other video that we watched, which was done last year. Both of these, in both of these uh, videos, he did express disdain for his previous actions. Okay? So we can't say Mike is inaccurate in claiming that Bo is unrepentant. Okay? Okay? But okay, but it's but what we're trying to do here is be as fair as possible, okay? Okay? We want to talk about we want to talk about this as fairly as possible, okay? So, I don't think it's fair for Mike to claim that he's unrepentant. That doesn't seem to be the case at all. In fact, he's so repentant that he already went to prison for it, okay? Okay. All right.
Did he address tar charges directly? Can he address charges directly? We don't know about that. We, we probably won't be able to know about that, okay? He did say he did say that he would curb stomp him his past self. That's pretty drastic. That's pretty drastic, right? Like saying that you would basically kill your ex self, your past self is pretty strong. Okay. Well, Tanner, um Okay, oh e Aaron, Aaron Elise, if you have it, if you have ev if you have a link to that, please, Aaron Elise, if you please have a link to that, please, uh, please send that to me. You can DM it to me on Discord. My Discord is super easy to find. Uh, DM, DM that to me if you have a link to that. Okay. Um. Based on the evidence I have seen, based on James's statement and the findings from what the original charges cost would be versus what he got, seems like there's an NDA involved. He did. He said he didn't take a plea deal. He did. He said he didn't take a plea deal. Yeah. Sometimes getting but listen. Just because, some, listen, this is ridiculous. You can't just, we can't just speculate randomly, okay? Okay, so. Now, we have to discuss a broader issue before we get into the debate, into, into the debates and drama, okay? Yeah, right? You can't, we can never determine if somebody has repented or anything like that. But Mike's claim that he was unrepentant is simply not accurate. You know, there's no evidence that that's the case. We don't, the thing is, I would be willing to be sold on the idea that somebody is unrepentant, but that is not what we have evidence of. In fact, we have evidence that a year ago, when this drama wasn't happening, Bo was willing to denounce his previous actions. So what I'm saying is is that at that point in time, Bo had no uh had no bias. He just was brought up by a fan and he said, "Yeah." He said, "No, like I don't I I did some bad things in the past. It was human alien smuggling." Yeah. Okay. So If you followed his channel, yes. Wait, but he, it, but that's the thing, Mellow Mike. We don't have any evidence that he's lied about his case anytime recently. When he was on a random podcast, he did seem to misrepresent it, but we don't know to what degree, okay? Yeah, I know Salty Coffee. Oh, he says he can't talk about it. Oh, okay. Can you just post that here in the chat? Can you post a link to that here? That'd be amazing. And you can just link it here and I'll grab it. I just, I usually tell people to discord me. Also, yeah. Did we have to lock down the discord? Oh, shit. I hope not. Uh-oh. That makes me worried. Okay, it doesn't look like we had to. Okay, we didn't have to. We didn't have to yet. Yeah, I think it would be fair to say he sugarcoated it, but but at the same time, that was five years ago. You can't, you can't like, okay, here we go. Let's look at this. This would be nice to know. Okay. Have you watched my videos? There's constant references to growing and changing. I cannot go into details. This is probably true. There, you can make references to something, but you can't go into details. Did Bo say he wouldn't or couldn't? He said he couldn't. I cannot go into details. That's pretty explicit. I mean, he has a point there. It could be an NDA. Keep in mind that these people, people involved in this might be, you know, might be in danger personally. We, listen, everyone, wait, hold on a second, hold on a second. 
<sighs> There's a lot of people who are coming in here who have their specific motivations. We're going to get there. We're still investigating. This is a big thing to investigation, to investigate, okay? So let's not, let's not go over overboard, okay? Let's not go overboard, all right? We got a lot of investigation to do, okay? So, there were some claims in Mike's video that I think were a a little bit of um that that were over the top, okay? Claims that Bo was unrepentant, which we have no evidence of. Um, we did not have, Mike did not provide the information necessary to locate, uh, the podcast, although thankfully we were able to locate it. Um, and we have now seen evidence that there are multiple cases of Bo denouncing his past behavior. Okay. Now. Okay, cool. Yeah. See you soon, Falgaia. Thanks for coming by. So. Let's continue. Let's think about a couple of things. Let's do some thinking real quick, okay? So, do we think that having a criminal or immoral past should dis disqualify someone from being a content creator in the future? Okay. No. Okay. So we have a lot of no's. Okay. No. Okay. So we got a lot of no's. Personally, I would say no. No. Maybe. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. So if that's the case, it do it can de depend on the crime, right? So like, for example, um, there are probably outliers, right? Probably a serial killer. We would not want to become a content creator, right? Probably reasonable. A lot of people wouldn't. But let's let's talk about something very serious for a second, okay? All right. Let's talk about some very serious things, okay? Hold on a second. We'll get there. We're going to get there. I want us to think about this in full, okay? There are a lot of people currently in our system who cannot get jobs, who cannot get work because they did a crime at some point in the past, okay? Crimes against children would be your last straw. Okay, that's fair. It also depends if the platform allows you to be in contact with potential victims. Well, I think it's fair to say that nothing that Bo is doing now has anything to do with human trafficking. None. Whatsoever. Like, he does a solo channel from his garage in which he talks about systemic problems. That doesn't really seem like anything to do with his previous crimes whatsoever. So he's not working in hospitality. He's not working as a, uh, as a coordinator of, of individuals. In fact, most of his work seems to be focused on preventing people from falling into extremism. Okay, that's worth considering. Let me ask you something. Should someone, uh, now I'm operating on the assumption that none of us here back the death penalty. Okay, I'm sure there's going to be some people who do believe in the death penalty, but I do not. I don't believe in the death penalty. Um, uh, like, I think you could probably make arguments for the most extreme situations um, that like, if somebody, I mean, we're not talking about people dying in war. Like, for example, if you are at war with Adolf Hitler, if Adolf Hitler gets killed in the war, that's not really the death penalty. That's, you know, it's not ideal, but that's active conflict. Death penalty is when someone is apprehended for their crimes, when somebody is apprehended for their crimes, and they are no longer a threat, and... We d and then a, a state decides to kill them. Okay, I don't support that. Okay, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, I think the death penalty is atrocious, especially in the U.S. So, um, so so.
Should the Nazis have been killed after the war? You know, honestly, I think that's an interesting question. I don't know if it's if it's a good idea to assat to uh ex to what's it called execute Nazis after the war. Why? Why were they killed after the war? That's a bit of a tough question, right? They were imprisoned. They had been removed from power. And yeah, many of them didn't anyway. Many of them who were useful weren't killed, but a lot were. That seems a little arbitrary, doesn't it? I think that it would be better to not kill people as a punishment. I find that giving the state the ability to end uh, someone's life is because they were genocidal maniacs. Do you really think that every single person who was involved in that was a genocidal maniac? Well, it would, right? Because if we're talking about consequentialism, well, a crime is already done. Killing them isn't what is your what is the consequence of killing them, right? But anyway, we're not talking about the death penalty here, so we're not going to get distracted on the death penalty. I'm sorry, we're not talking about it anymore. What I was trying to get at is that I think we can agree. Uh, bread pill, um, yeah, I'll attempt to. We're talking about the bow situation. We're trying to determine... If somebody who has done their time for a crime should be prevented by, should be prevented from having certain types of work, okay? That's wild. Okay. That's a good question, ya boy Tapoy. Many people have talked about this. Probably not. 85 to 2D Derek. Um, that's probably a bit of an exaggeration. So, let's talk real quick. Okay? Let's talk real quick. Felon, uh, Bo is a felon with worker abuse charges. He's already prevented from doing all kinds of work permanently. Okay? That's a very good point. There might not be many jobs that Bo can do anymore, okay? Do we think that because he did something bad in the past that he should have to live a life of poverty or not being able to do the things he wants? Do we think that people who've committed crimes in the past should be able to go on to live a full life? What happens if you did a really bad crime and then 15 years later, you want to make something of yourself. Do you think that person should be allowed to? I would say yes. I would say, personally, I would say yes. Especially if they're changed. But I don't, I think that he said he had a job offer, job offer right after getting out of prison for the same job. And he chose not to get back into it. That's what he said. He said he had a, a job in the same industry, a.k.a. gray market or black market labor labor laundering are they entitled to good pr no but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're guaranteed or that they should be guaranteed to have bad pr we're talking about human traffickers okay let's switch it up let's talk about a murderer okay let's talk about a murderer. Bread pill. Uh, Bow of the fifth column was convicted of um, alien, what they called alien smuggling, which is not technically human trafficking, but involves coercively uh, abusing the visa system to, to bring workers into the country and exploit them. 
That was 15, up, up somewhere between 15 years ago and, uh, and t between 10 and 15 years ago. Okay. Um, so yes. Wait for real. Holy shit. That is breaking. Oh my God. I have to talk about that. Tastiest pizza. Are you for fucking real? Holy shit. Okay, we're going to go over that after this. That is actually wild. Okay, we'll get into that. Holy shit. Okay, we'll get into that. I'll, it'll be fun after this, after this, after this. Fucking holy shit, that's good. Okay, we'll get into this. We got to... That's exciting. That's treats for later. You got to stick around to find out. Poetry. Okay. We got candy for after, but we got to finish this first. Okay. Preventing felons from getting work leads them to going back into the industry that made them felons in the first place. I agree. Okay? But let's talk... Yes, Vosh did. Yes, he did. So, let's talk real quick. Okay? All right. Give me a second here. Let's make a hypothetical that I think has parallels. Okay? Let's say a guy killed someone in the past, okay? Let's say they killed someone when they were 24, okay? And they go to prison, and they serve their time. Like, say they were involved in a shootout, okay? So they killed somebody, but it wasn't like cold-blooded serial killer murder. Like, say they got in a gang fight, and they shot somebody. That person's, that person leaves prison... And they decide to become a musician. Should that musician be prevented from being a musician? Because I think that there are a lot of musicians who've done just that, right? The conviction might impact their ability to tour. Well, yes, that's true. See, I think it's kind of weird that a lot of times we look at crimes as though they are a permanent blight on somebody's soul forever. And I think in some ways they are, right? Right? I think they are to a certain degree. Um, in that we suffer greatly uh, remembering things that we move from, right? But I don't know that societally we should treat crimes like a blight on the soul. Right, exactly, exactly, Electric Meal. What's the point of even having prison or jail if we don't allow them to be free afterwards? Infinite punishment for finite crimes is wrong. Also, we should note that a human, traf human trafficking conjures an image in people's heads that doesn't correspond with what Bo did. Labor exploitation would conjure a more accurate image, though maybe just because as a society our view of what human trafficking is is skewed by the worst versions of it depicted on TV shows. I did bring that up. Remember that Malcolm X did a hard time and look at the things that he went on to do. Yes. Did he do time in prison? Yes, he did. Yeah, lots of people have done things, done time in prison for varying crimes. I just think that there are, that sometimes we are too hard on criminals, on people who serve their time. We prevent them from voting. We treat them as though they are permanently a underclass because they did something wrong. But is that really fair? Like, even if they did do something really, really bad. People change a lot. The, the Allegedly, the point of our justice system is to rehabilitate people. I know we don't build it that way. But 
even punitive, even a punitive system, the goal is to rehabilitate, right? I would argue that there that that somebody becoming an artist or a a journalist after having a dark past is not a bad thing, right? It's not like um it's not like Bo is a like labor rights activist, right? He's not. He's a YouTuber who talks about political issues. Do we really think that it's fair to say that he shouldn't be a a a presenter, a political commentator because he did a crime over a decade ago? You're tired of white men in general. Just implode already. Well, okay, but that's just a, like in this case, I'm not trying to say you're being, you're not being like racist, but that's a little weird, don't you think? Like, yes. Is there a systemic problem with white people getting away with more and et cetera? Yes. But come on. That's kind of silly. That's a little monk S. It's, that's, that's kind of weird. It's kind of weird that just because Bo is white, that you think that his career should be destroyed or that he shouldn't be allowed to rehabilitate himself from crimes. That's very weird. That's very weird to me. It's just really fucking weird. They came from Kevin Logan stream. Who's Kevin Logan stream? I don't know who that is. I don't know who Kevin Logan is. Who's Kevin Logan? Okay. Yeah, who's KF Logan? I don't know who that is. Kaflogan? Kaflogan, okay. This might come off as a bit of fedora tippy, but I think we should, in our justice system, work, re work rehabilitating and promoting the best outcomes and leave punishments for the metaphysical infractions left to the realm of the metaphysical. I think that's fair. Kevin Logan is a Christy Winter simp? Uh-oh. Older skeptic YouTuber. Oh, okay. Okay, I've had enough of you. I'm putting you in timeout. There you go. Just just spend some time in timeout. You need to chill. Oh, okay. Okay, I didn't know that. K Logan. Okay, I didn't know that. Will we watch the new Mike vid? Yes, we will be. Don't you worry. We'll be watching that. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, this is complicated, right? I don't think, and and here's what I've got so far, okay, everybody? Hear me out on this. I don't think that Mike is making a good case for canceling um, <laughs> this, this stream is the real lefty debate. I mean, kind of, yeah. The, the chat, everybody's debating. This is a tough question, right? Yeah, of course, absolutely. Uh, Mike, Mike punched a couch. That was very funny. So it's it, it's it's tough. It's a tough question to ask. Now, here's what I after reviewing all of this so far, and we're gonna see more. And I might change. And for the record, I might change my opinion if more evidence arises. But for right now, I I I can't help but feel that this feels a little bit out of place. There doesn't really seem to be anything worthy of canceling uh, uh, Bo over here. Bo is not trying to, Bo is not trying to do anything that, his, that would require us worrying about his past crimes. And even if you wanna argue that it's like, oh, it's optically dangerous, well, Wait a second, though. Hold on a minute. Hold on just a second, though. Just a second. Aren't prisoner rights the sort of thing that lefties are supposed to get behind? Shouldn't we be willing to defend somebody who is trying to do, to trying to make a better world, who is actually pushing to fight against the things that he may have once participated in. Is that not literally the ideal? 
And I don't think we have any evidence that Bo is doing anything uh, that would indicate he's not ref he's not reformed. So I don't know. Is human trafficking not over that line? Well, it's pretty bad. But at the same time, Rivi, so is murder. And and we have soldiers on the left, don't we? Don't we? We have a lot of soldiers on the left. And those a lot of them have probably killed somebody. They probably done murder in the name of in the name of the state, but they are able to reform and say, "Hey, that's fucked up." Yeah, but that's stupid, Ilya. I loud. That's stupid. You think there's more nuance to murder than trafficking? Okay, you're just not being serious at this point. That's not us. That's come on. Did they murder for personal gain or did the state force them? Think about it this way. Military combat is often coerced. Hold on a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. We're having fun. It's a wild stream today, Occam's. We've we've landed on a very spicy. We've we've landed on a very spicy thing. People sign up for the military. We know that they sign up knowing they are going to have to kill someone. It's a lot more complicated than that, okay? way 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 more of that we have no idea the level of of this is why we talk about this right there are all kinds of things that can put you in a place to commit a crime a lot no bo didn't murder somebody but we're but i'm bringing up a parallel I think that the fact that Bo engaged in something pretty fucking dark, went to federal prison for it, got out, chose not to go back into there, chose not to go back into the, in, in, in the in industry when he had the opportunity to, and is now making a living creating content online talking about politics... Bo was not a soldier. Bo was a military contractor. Different. He didn't go back. He could have gone back. Yes, we're talking about Bo, the fifth, fifth column. Yes. So, I, I think, so far, with the evidence we have so far, I don't think this is fair. I don't think it's fair. I think that Bo has clearly for the last 15 years done everything he can to get away from his past to no longer live that past and mike while he's reporting facts what is the relevance what is the what is the relevance of that why does it matter Besides the content cycle. Uh, but besides the content cycle. Mike from CIA? No. Spite from PA? Shrikel, yeah. Mike extra extrapolated a lot. But also, Mike is saying that there needs to be accountability. The guy went to prison, though. Bo went to prison, Mike. What do you want from him? I would say that if, I don't know, 
how would we feel? Let me let me give you let me pitch you a potential, okay? I'm going to pitch you one other quick thing, okay? We're going to get back into this. And um and I'm going to I'm going to explain something real quick, okay? Let me let me hit you with a hypothetical, okay? What if there was a lefty rapper who had a big YouTube following and he had done prison time for g murder murder in a gang, right? Real ro real rotten bad shit. We can agree with that. Okay? And then another content creator said Um, and then another content creator said that they should they should not be uh, r allowed to represent the left in any way because of their past crimes. Would the left not say, that's fucked. That's fucked. This artist did their time. And we, being the left that believes in rehabilitation are going to stand up for this person who did their time. Would that not be the conclusion most lefties would come to? Would we not not only reject that, but we would probably rally around that person, right? That's not Mike's position. We just watch Mike's video. We're going to watch his newest one and we'll see what he has to say. I don't think that that's a straw man at all. Maybe we should see if Mike wants to come on here and talk to me after this. I think there's one person, Lonnie. Don't 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 let it go too far. Yeah, good. She Corp brings up a good point. Has anyone here ever run hard drugs? Don't answer that question, please. Uh, you get locked into other relationships and circumstances that limit your ability to turn it around. Yes, that is a well-recognized phenomenon. I'm just glad this dude was able to find another option rather than falling into his old networks. That's true. I We brought this up before. He could have gone back into it, and he didn't. He didn't go back into that bad industry. Lots of people do bad shit. Lots of people do really bad shit, okay? And I do recognize there are probably some lines that are too far. But is that really the one? Is this really the line? Do we think that... Bo participating in and exploiting workers as a part of a fucking get rich quick scheme that hurt did hurt people. Do we think that that is worthy of somebody never being able like like not really like like do we believe that that should forever haunt somebody? I don't think so. I, I don't think so so far. I can understand if you think that's over the line. That's fine. I recognize that. Human trafficking is among the bad of the bad. But I think you've made your point. He walked away and proved himself. Yeah, human trafficking is really fucking bad. But I mean, guys, so is fucking fraud. So is fucking... Do you know, do you know how much damage... That, do you know how much... You know there are people who do life insurance fraud? There are people... Not just li not life insurance fraud. There are people who do... Who defraud old people. And those people can reform, right? Those people cause a lot of harm. Yes, I agree human trafficking is bad. But keep in mind... Yeah, that's really, really bad too. I agree. I'm not downplaying the fucking significance of the crime. What I'm saying is... I think that we should probably make the number of crimes you cannot be reformed from... Or that we think you can't be reformed from pretty small. Otherwise, er anybody does anything and they're done.
how much harm versus how you've changed? Well, maybe. What do you think crimes, what crimes do you think cannot be reformed from? Um, I don't know. I think that like serial killing is probably one you can't, that would be pretty hard to reform somebody. Um, like serial rape, probably another one. Uh, serial torture are probably things that are really, really, really hard to reform somebody from. Is Mike on the left? You thought he was center right? <laughs> Good question. Yeah, serial. Yeah, I do. I do agree. I mean, in this case, he did engage in serial trafficking, but he was only caught and he only did his time once and he never did it again. How about serial bad Twitter takes? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. All right, let's watch Mike's new video, okay? Let's get back into the content, okay? We've been thinking for a while, and my brain is tired. So let's watch the new Mike from PA video and figure out what the fuck is going on. Good. Wait, he doesn't have a new one up. Wait, where's his new video? Wait, wait, wh where's the link? Where's the link to this? Somebody, Sorry, did somebody send me a link? Did I miss this? I missed a link. Here's the link. Okay. We all need a day off? Nah. It's not even close. You kidding me? I've only been going for four, five hours. We still got hours to go, Demon Mama content. Are you kidding me? You are a motherfucker? Uh, I want Big Boy muted for a day. A day. Into the brig. Upgrade that to a day mute. You'll serve your time and you'll like it, Big Boy. Fucker. What a waste of time. You made a video for me? Okay, I'll watch this in a little bit, Glooby. Thank you. That is one of the crimes that cannot be forgiven. I fucking hate that shit. It's so stupid. Now, is Rick Rolling reformable? No. Oh, Canadian Nazi again? Again? Nah, we'll watch it in a bit. We need to continue. We need to go watch the Chud Logic. Mike from PA conversation. Now we're going to get into the fun part, okay, everybody? All right? Yeah, he's a couch beater. True, 85D2D Derek. Thank you. It's a saga, apparently. All right, we're going to watch. We're going to watch Chud Logic take on Mike from PA, okay? Because I want to hear about this. I heard this was spicy as fuck. I haven't seen the surfs one. Maybe we'll see that one. But let's watch this one first, okay? Let's do this. Let's find it out. Video. Easter Reading drama. And, like, the implications of it. You can eat. Hush. All right. We got to scrub around and find where the shit this fucking shit is. That's the I hypocrite stuff. Question debater. Hey! Hey, well, wait a minute! That's me! That's me on stream there! Hey, thanks! Damn, look at who that is! That's fucking me! I'm poking a bit of fun at it because I just find some of it a bit funny. But, you know, respect to the guy. And he's trying to be consistent. He's doing a lot of good for the left. Okay. The first thing we must wrestle I have to say that I'm, you know, by silicon you. If anyone wants to go into his chat, or if anyone's in his chat, and let's know right. that I'm ready. Let's find out. That'll be good. I've still got, look, I've still got Slitheroo up, Ethan. Slitheroo. Yeah, listen, like, if Bo generally is, is like, I don't like, I don't like the idea of repentance, but the way I'd frame it. Wait a minute. I'm not, am I a narcissist? No. Do I like attention? Yes. Difference. It's very simple. So, if 
if Bo has not been honest, I think you can criticise that and you can say, you know, the problem I be of care for all advocates don't bring up explicitly it's inherent um but i want to hear his reaction to the evidence and all right let's um, see i'm surprised more might have care for all advocates don't bring up explicitly it's inherent positive impact on disability rights as someone with a physical disability from birth medicare for all seems like the most impactful piece of disability rights legislation since the ada crafty geek that's a very good point what is he what is he talking about right now um so we're gonna talk to chud and then we're probably gonna talk to left flank faith that standard and uh, blue special race that has a progress now so you know check let's that find out. out everybody yeah no worries um, um i noticed as well you, your viewership's uh kind of um doing pretty good at the moment that must be a good yeah, feeling always good uh i mean this is this is an average day for me okay nothing too nothing too crazy shall we find no out if that's true let's find out let's find out if that's true real quick i think that would be worthy of a fact check let's find out central committee let's find out was today an average day what was he talking about it today was today the day that he talked about it well yeah actually actually it kind of is yeah it's a little higher than usual, but yeah, it pretty much is. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough, Mike. We fact-checked you, and we found you factual. I just mean it's kind of grown over, like, what, the last six, seven, eight months or so? Something like that. Good job, Oh, buddy. yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think uh, the election um, and, of course, you know, the January events and then just kind of, you know, being so consistent has helped mm. my, my channel. And I think I provide a lot of good analysis and in-depth knowledge of a lot of things. Well, all and right, all right, all right, you know, all right. Calm down there, you know, Mike. You never know what's going to make people watch you. And, uh, you know, I've had, I've made my mistakes over the months as well. I'm far from perfect. True. Uh, as I'm sure everybody, as everybody has said. So you watch, as everybody my, has you said, watched oh. my bow video. Mm -hmm. um, and what were your impressions? Uh, what was your, what are your objections with it? Sure. Um, and you know, and yeah. like, what, what, you know, I made it in one day because, uh, let me just, let me give you this background. If anybody's understanding why I made this video, um, I'll be honest with you. I was never really a fan of Bo. Uh, okay. Um, okay. I didn't like the character. Um, it felt fake and it seems like it mostly appealed to people that already agreed with him. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like, it reminded me of diamond and silk or the Lincoln project. You okay. know, where it was just like, you find somebody who agrees with you, who claims to be of some group that's not you, and it feels like you're winning, right? Uh, but the effectiveness hmm. seems very, not very much to me. And when I go and look at who his viewers are and his, you know, all his comments on Facebook, it's mostly, you know, middle-aged, white libs. Okay. Um, and so I never really found his content to be that good, but I mostly ignored it. Uh, I didn't really have a problem with them. Okay. Dude. Uh, I just didn't personally All like right, it. All right, dude. And uh, I know that a, rather, right, a lot dude. of other streamers Mike like him. Mike is such a hater. Especially those people who call themselves anarchists, because I think at some point in the past he called himself an anarchist, but at no point on his current content does he ever say the word anarchist All right, or yeah, socialist. that's good. I'm ready. I'm here and, for it. I'm here um, to be entertained. What's really odd about him is, is the pivot of the content um, uh, lately. Uh, he really blew up, and, you know, I didn't really care. But there was an article in the LA Times uh, yesterday, and that's what got me down this rabbit hole. Of sure. I found out that he was basically being promoted by Google, being promoted by uh, Silicon Valley as a way to fend off regulation. Um, okay. And they were saying okay. That he was okay. All right, dude. All right. Fact check needed on that. That is not what it was at all. Oh my he, God. He was a de radicalization. We looked at, we just looked into this. This is ridiculous. De radicalization <sighs> channel. And they were kind of promoting him intentionally. Wait, we just did this uh, though. We just read the article that was, the, we read an article that was by really biased against Bo that, that talked about this. It's not that he's being used by Silicon Valley. There's a company that is putting all kinds of content that could lead people away from extremist materials there that's not that is very uncharitable that's fucking uncharitable that is very uncharitable okay grow um so, so, sorry is, is this outside my, of normal that, like algorithmic like push pushing of him yes what is okay. this yes 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 is there like yeah, an article they, they about it or? yeah 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 okay 
So, and then they mentioned like no, I can't. Stuff about I can't him. do that. And I, you know, I didn't talk about it in the video. Thank you. It's not relevant though. to what bothered me. Like that is weird. It's kind of like why is why is he being pushed in this algorithm more than like? Oh, that's you know, Chud's win Silicon Windows Valley thing. Get rid of your Windows thing, Chud. That seems kind of odd. Um, um, and that's kind of makes you raise an eyebrow. But that's not you know, whatever. These websites are free to promote who they want to promote. It is okay. what it is. The algorithm is the algorithm. Yep. Um, okay. But then I got then it talked about him being a felon, and I was like, oh, that's weird. What was what was? And and here's the thing, I don't give a shit if someone's a felon. Our criminal justice system doesn't matter to me. Our laws oh, are a joke. Oh, come on. Uh, someone being a felon doesn't make them a bad person. I believe in rehabilitation. I don't think it's, going to it's... prison has anything to do with that. Yep. I don't think that, I think a lot of people get away with slaps on the wrist who should have gotten much more intensive rehabilitation and correction from okay. society. Sure. And some people who go, who get way too harsh a punishment. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of my, uh, here it is. It's it's such a cringe title. It's called Startup Effort to Stem Online Extremism Accidentally Push People Toward an Anarchist. Right? So here's the article. Um, let me see. I'll, I'll send it to you. In a, okay. So he sends the article. And okay. uh, so it's cringe because it's like, oh, anarchist, extremist. And this is, you know, who gives a shit about this? But one of the things that's weird is it talks about how uh, this a method basically – developed by this company called Moonshot CVE called okay. Redirect and has partnerships with Google as well as the Anti-Defamation League. Mother um, Meerkat, you are in the middle of us trying to get to the bottom of the bow of the fifth column drama, which has been unfolding today. So we're trying to figure this out. They spent money advertising him and gave him algorithmic like boosts, right? Okay. Uh, and it was in an effort to blunt federal regulation. It's a weird iceberg, but I think so, you'll have fun with it. Sit, come in that and get was, comfy. That was, so Bo was the person that they like boosted and he exploded in 2019. Like he went from 30,000 subscribers to like 600,000 and it was through this algorithmic boost. Okay. Um, well, okay, that's not accurate. I was accurate. like, okay, that's, that's weird. That's, but then I found out- That's really not very accurate. Uh, his videos were being used as a part of ads. That is, you think that the hate for Mike, I haven't seen Honestly, Rivi, I really feel my chat has been fucking con containing themselves. What Mike is talking about here, he's being very, he's not being accurate. He's slanting the story really hard. Out more about him. And then I was like, wait a minute. So I looked into his, like the trafficking thing. And that's when. Yeah, I exactly. That exactly. That's true. Um, and realized that basically was lying to people about it and i think the behavior that he he perpetuated i didn't was know so how relevant bad did but we'll see I that guess. he can't get away with just lying about it um because he exploited people in a way that's even more despicable than stuff that jeff bezos does if you're angry about jeff bezos and the pissing in bottles and the and only paying 50 dollars an hour you can't then turn around and say hey this guy exploiting people and paying them 265 an hour uh and put 15 years ago and secondly jeff bezos operates the biggest company in the world that is a total that is a nonsense statement putting them 20 people okay. to a condo is okay wait a second but did you just sorry just to be clear are you saying that what bo did is worse than what jeff bezos does did, did i would say no 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 okay no, no, okay no, okay no. That's fine. okay well, let's not there's rank like a, there's order a, there's a scale let's, there let's though not right, right. Wait, let's not well yeah yeah yeah. absolutely let's not rank order but the okay. point is like if one bothers you the second <sighs> should bother you it's the same continuum of behavior no sure. this is silly as fuck um okay so yeah just just to kind of um at the start of what you said i don't think thoughts. but so bo doesn't doesn't I completely agree that what bo did was bad you know um, reprehensible, whatever word you want to use to adequately. Thanks for the raid, like, Imperial know, News. Appreciate that. Was. Thank you very, so very much. Bad. Welcome, everybody. Um, Come on in. Come get comfy. Um, and also, I got concerned. Yeah, we're gonna go into that uh, Iron Mage. That he doesn't. That we're gonna do that uh, after. We get a, we get a treat for after this. Put in your video. I don't know if there's other content out there. Um, so mm -hmm. you know, I scoured for it, and okay. if somebody has a video of him talking about it and apologizing and explaining it mm -hmm. and kind of admitting it, I would never have made the video. Sure. Okay. So if he if yeah. he had gone out of his way to be like, listen, I did this horrible thing, Wait, but he did, and it was bad. But and he, here's how but he we did. Can stop he did it do from that. Happening to other women and other uh, vulnerable immigrants, and here's the groups I'm working with to stop the you know the crimes that I did, and and I was wrong. That would be one thing. 
You yeah, know, we're checking I would in have on no Chud right now. I would yeah. say watch Bo. He seems like a good Imperial guy. Imperial News, but we're the checking reality in on... is that he lies about it. Just so you know, <laughs> what we're doing right now is we are trying to follow the story of the claims against Bo today. And so far, I don't think this has been very fairly presented. So we're trying to get to the bottom of it. He says he pretends to be some sort of refugee saving coyote. Yeah. Uh, in kind of this like very um, romantic style so that people who are anti-statist or anti-immigration law kind of give him credit for it. Okay. So as opposed to the reality of what he did. What I'd say is, yeah, I agree that he lied about it on that podcast. You know, um, obviously, like, I'm, you know, just to be clear as well, I don't know Bo. I'm not friends with Bo. I've got no willingness to kind of defend. I'm defend not talking Bo to Mike such. right now. Um, I'd totally talk to yeah, Mike if I he mean, wants you know, to. Though. Failing, having anything else, sure. He, he lied about it on that podcast. Um so I think I agree, and my chat agrees, and I think most people would agree that what Bo did w was wrong. And in fact, you know, one thing I would say is I do have a bit of frustration with people who were like, you know, oh, Bo was just helping people out. You know, you're a bootlicker if you think the police described it accurately, blah, blah, blah. I think... Exactly. You, you know, you, you can... And that's the way people attack. They also called me a clout farmer. Okay. Like... Oh, cool. Really? Thank you, Mother. I hope I'm it's good, fan I'm making a comment art. about someone who did something horrible and continues to just, like... Thank you, Mother Mirset. I hope it's nice and, stuff. And, ...and lie about it. Like, that seems pretty gross, right? So, so... If I did something like... This, like, can you tell me, honestly, that if I did something like this, that everybody would be like, well, Mike's reformed? Right, um, right. I mean, I, you know, I know that you about got, that. Okay, so you've got a, a very... Uh, what's the right word? In, in the UK, we'd say you like Marmite, right? So you like Marmite, you either love Mike from PA yeah, sure. or you hate Mike from PA, yes. right? Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, fair enough. Um, so yeah. I, I would, yeah, I agree that there'd be people out there who would come down very hard on you for that. Um, and it depends mm -hmm. whether someone would have like a, a principled position in, in some respect. I don't know, you know, I think we can get into the criminal justice Chad used to be good at this game, by the way. Um, but just to get back to kind of, you know, um, what, what were we discussing there? Like, yeah, unequivocally, what he did was wrong. It seems like he's, you know, not, not been upfront about it. Um, I guess mm -hmm. one, one question I've got for you, okay? What would be the ideal outcome to resolve this situation in your mind? Uh, uh, I mean... Let's find out. Okay, so now we are transferring the conversation from the facts of the matter to my solution for what happens with human traffickers or no, no, alien no, no, no. smugglers who have been caught. No, and no, no, how should no, we no, no, do no, it in no, the no, ideal no. world? No, 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 nothing, nothing to do with that. For, that's nothing to do. What I mean is with both from the fifth column. So we know we've point. looked at the facts. We know what's happened. What do you? Well, let think? me ask you a qu before before we go down. What I think you should do. Let me ask you a question. Is there any behavior that you think is so bad that people should probably just like not be major figures in content creation? Hmm. Mike. Like, is there anything someone can do? Somehow, just like maybe somehow, Mike from PA always manages to not not take co content creation seriously enough and take it too seriously at the same time. Like, what the fuck? Like we just talked about this, making content is like being a t it's being like being a musician, but then again, remember Mike is set central central committee, so he he's kind of doing the LARP thing where he sells himself as the revolution. You should just you know you can be a leftist, you can support leftism, but maybe you shouldn't be in the front. Is there anything, or is like our rehabilitation includes the right to have a platform? Is that to be the phrased? front? To make hundreds of thousands of dollars sure well from I, cre creating content I like is there nothing that no one can lie. do and he also rep remembers he represents the left -E and the pro and the immigration reform position he is somewhat like people have said that i'm bad for the left because i'm cringe right so like well, this yeah, is bad for the left because no Mike you're you're cringe. not They're you're not bad you're you're bad for the left because well okay look let's be real here i think mike is bad from the left bad for the left because his ideas suck to, to steal from the Matt Gates thing. <laughs> it's true. Mike from PA pushes class reductionism. Mike from PA make, gets in fights with all kinds of other people. Mike sucks from the left because he's ineffective. Not because he's like some horrible person. But I think Mike wants to find a reason to bit cancel people because they're horrible people or something. Or okay. we shouldn't allow him to be in the front uh, uh, making advocacy because yeah. he's cringe. Well, and that the, hurts the left. The, the, so if I, if I <laughs> should be Iron Man for being Look cringe... Out. Should someone be the platform for human trafficking and exploiting hundreds of people? Well, or is cringe here, more important? Okay, right. Here's here's okay. I feel like maybe what's happening. I feel like your your personal experiences and stuff that's happened to you is affecting this in some way. 
Um, you know, you, you clearly feel maybe somewhat aggrieved by some of the stuff that's happened. I mean, I kind of agree, by um, and I feel like I'm sure I feel aggrieved. No, I'm just I'm just asking from from your point of view. No, is sure. Is there anything? Well, you know, I think that the problem you've got, that the problem I've got with that is like, you know, how would how would we meaningfully? Well, uh, bread pill. This is just drama baiting for more viewers, which equals more ad revenue. True. However, there are interesting things to be discussed about here, right? Right? There are genuinely, we had a very interesting discussion about this, and I think it's important for us to talk about them. That's it. Like, we don't have control over these platforms, right? Um, True. So, so, you know, my perspective on it is, like, I mean, anyone can set up a YouTube account, and then it's down to mm -hmm. the audience if they want to support them or not, right? Um, right. And if something comes out about someone, and it's controversial, mm -hmm. again, it goes to mm -hmm. the audience, and they then got mm -hmm. to decide on the measure of the facts whether they wanted to continue to support this person or not with that taken into account. Um, right. So it's not it's not so much the case of like, should oh, anyone I absolutely do Mother Merced. It's kind of like, well, we don't really have any control over that anyway, so what does it matter, you know, what I think? Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, if someone's been rehabilitated, they should have the I know a lot of my, a lot of, lot of searches do, for my name probably you know, results in real nice art, okay? Um, there Probably might some be some limitations too. if we're thinking of maybe the protection of children, for example, because, you know, under our current system, I don't think we can really say people okay, are fully so rehabilitated. I, you know what I mean? So I, 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 have to, I have to say that I'm pretty unsatisfied with this conversation so far because Why? we have skipped over the entire substance of what Bo did and we've kind of put it under the, the rug and now we want to talk wait, about rehabilitation. You, wait a second. But here's the problem. No, you Here's the problem under... with that. Okay, yeah, go ahead. The, the problem is... He hasn't apologized and he's shown no remorse. That's not okay. true though. So you're see, asking see, me. See, this is where Mike starts just... lying. That's not true. Thank you for the sub, Joe in a box. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Hey, wow. Thank you for that. That's for like five months of subs. Thank you so very much. Or what? What? It's three months. Thank you so much. That is a lie. We know that's not true. Zine to run his PR campaign for how he can no, keep making videos? I'm not asking you to do that at all. No, that's not the case at all. And I apologize if there's any mistakes. I know this is the kind um, of shit that makes people hate Mike. Yeah, I, I, I know this is. I agree. That what he did was extremely Well, it doesn't matter, well. right? Because Mike is making allegations. He has a responsibility to know about this. If Mike is going to dox and make huge allegations against Bo... He has a he he has he has the responsibility as a content creator to to do the research. Hey, thank you so much for that gifted tier one sub. Thank you, really appreciate that, Joe. Oh my God, I'll I'll do this. This will be really wild. Did he dox Bo? Yes, he did. Now it was a soft dox. It was a soft dox, but he did do it. He did do it. He did was bad, okay? And secondary to that, I agree that him being dishonest about it is is egregious and bad. Now, out of what I've said there, what, what do you disagree with or what would you like me to elaborate on? Okay, but my video is about what he did. Yeah. And we're not talking anything about what he did and why well, it's what, unacceptable. What you, but, the reason why... Okay, I agree the with reason, you it's unacceptable. Okay, what else can I say? The reason, okay, yeah, no, I, I'm glad that you agree it's unacceptable. All right. right. So what I what a, what a soft dox is when your name and and stuff is out there, but you but it's not easily available, and somebody makes it front and center. That's what I call a soft dox. Okay, so for this is what I mean. Bo's name is out there, and his his criminal record is public information. But putting the name Bo and the criminal record into one video and bringing everyone's attention to it is a soft dox, in my opinion. We got a Tyler Bluntman failed again. Oh, boy. We'll go take a look at that after this. Oh, that'll be fun. Let me, let me ask Tyler you the question. Bluntman. Instead okay. of coming to me and asking, let me ask you the question. What should you Hello, think boy. is appropriate for both? Enjoy okay. Twitch but chat I've, for a I've, while. You know, you're the one that's made a video and you've said that what, what should, you know, so... so you're lucky. You, well, you agree that it's egregious. Yeah. And I want to have a meeting of the mind, so I'm just wondering what you think. Sure, would be but Tyler you know, Joyman. I, I asked you the question first, and they're like, "Why can't you just answer my question first? Okay, I'll, yeah. okay, I'll, I'll answer. Exactly, um, exactly, blah blah. Let me answer it this way. Okay, I don't think at this point he can do anything through YouTube that would no, be sufficient. No, Mike. Right. Mike. Uh, Mike was not. Mike was never doxed. Oh my God, this is so silly. Mike was not doxed. 
<laughs> Mike calls in and tells people where he's from. His name was literally Mike from Pete. That's very silly. Come on. Come on. Let's not let's not be stupid here. Um, let's I not be fucking stupid. When you have exploited hundreds of people and stolen, you know, their overtime money, done millions of dollars of wage theft, paid them below minimum wage, mm -hmm. exploited them, and then sent them back to their home country. So there yep. wasn't even the element of they got to stay in America. Like most yeah, of them Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Romania Gina, don't, don't, don't Bulgaria, mute him here. Right? It's all good. So he just profited on them while they were in the United States by taking advantage. Don't, don't mute him again, Gina. That's enough for, for them to be out of sight. And sight chat. This we got bigger oh, targets to focus on, Gina. was very bad. Like, yeah, yeah, why are you explaining yeah, 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 to me again? But what I'm explaining, I'm explaining. So yeah. Okay. What would he do? Okay, so the first thing is he was involved in one of the largest trafficking operations in Florida. Yep. Very bad. What has way, he egregious. done? What has he done to help stop similar operations in his area? We don't know. Like he's clearly deeply involved with, with trafficking. Has no. he set up an organization? No. He to help was women? he was involved in trafficking in the past. Let's do let's do the motherfucking fact here, okay? Come on escape trafficking situations has okay. he spent any money on charities assisting trafficking victims has he participated yeah, also, we don't know in any one kind of, of yes. uh a direct action it was 15 years ago almost 15 years 13 years ago was when it what happened. has he done besides you know he did go to prison so mm -hmm. that was forced oh, on him wow. by the state it's not like right. he decided to take some time to reflect on the he did his time he did. yes he got caught mm -hmm. profiting millions of dollars from exploiting people paying them less than minimum wage and then he went to prison and served his time. Yeah. And then that's that. Okay. Okay. And and then he went, but he has done nothing to make up for it. And this is a very serious, egregious thing. This mm -hmm. is not saying the N word. Yep. This is not making a bad joke. This is not, you know, um, Mike unfortunately has money been or outside, selling drugs. But the next year is still exploiting remains. hundreds of vulnerable people mm -hmm. for your own personal profit. Yep and then doing pretty much nothing to make up for it. And also sure. then when you have a public platform, kind of lie about it. Yep. Now to me, that's not okay, man. No, it's uh, not okay, I agree with and, you. And so like, what are the things he could do? First yeah. of all, publicly apologize and acknowledge that he told, told lies. By the, the way, we know for like, it's causing you physical pain, Chud Logic. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Chud. Listen, sometimes having a review is good, okay? I mean, I will say Mike was being pretty, pretty bad to you, but it's all right. St stay comfy. Stay comfy. Okay. It's all good. Explain truthfully what he did, mm -hmm. what he was convicted of, and then dedicate large sums of money to organizations to help these human trafficking victims that still exist. Because this process still goes on. And you know okay. one of the people that did, does this at Mar-a-Lago, Donald Trump, he brings in people on these fraudulent visas that has to work for him for so that they get paid. Yeah, they today, uh, today, right now, yes. Yeah, and okay. and that is something that is going on right now. So if Bo showed us that not only did he learn, but he's dedicated to solving the problem he was a profitable member of, then I wouldn't have a problem, and then I would okay. be okay with it. But this is, this is really, really, really bad, yeah. and it's not just a personal thing. It's not. You know, it, it is, it is, you know, does he still have some of the money? Like he was forced to pay a million dollars, but originally the government was going for 3.2 million. Like, does he still have some of the money he took from these women? Like I need, like, I would like to know more transparency. And I got the, I tried to get uh, evidence Dude. that was from Dude. groups that I trust. He went to fucking prison. Get off his fucking ass. This is the weirdest. This is super weird and super parasocial. This is where it's gotten really weird, okay? This is where it's starting to get really weird. Remember, Bo is not pretending to be a revolutionary. Bo is just a content creator who talks about politics and survivalism stuff on YouTube. Mike is the one making a big deal about this 13 years after Bo got out of prison. Like the Southern Poverty Law Center, like the Florida State report on uh, human trafficking. And uh, I tried to get the direct testimony from one of the victims as opposed to just using what, what? the government said, right? Okay. And what the fuck? Mike tried to find one of the victims? Dude, what the fuck? That's extremely weird. That is extremely weird. Holy shit, that's fucking weird.
Thank you, Sakamura, for the sub. I appreciate that. No one is caping for a human trafficker, Pete. Sit down and shut up. We've been in this for fucking three hours. You get one chance. You do more stupid shit like that, Pete, I'll blast you out. Fucking idiots. God, I hate these people. I I just... I yeah, don't the victims know are why redacted. people want to rush ahead to the... Oh, my God. That is stalker level. That's fucking weird. ...admitted to wrongdoing. To me, it seems to be reformed. You've got to apologize as the first step and actually feel remorseful. It's none of your business, dude. Okay. So, just to respond to what you said, um, I guess my first question would be, because obviously, you know, I um, agree that our current framework for criminal justice, or I say R, you know, mm -hmm. in the UK in the US um the is, carceral system the carceral system is is nowhere near fit for purpose right um however mm -hmm. it is the um system that kind of as a society we've agreed we used to deal with these issues um so i guess i guess my issue is if if bo has kind of served his time whilst i agree that there's certainly more that he he can do under the framework that we currently exist under as a society what is a tip he has what is a tip paid his debt to society you know, not necessarily by your or my definition, but by society's definition as it stands. Um, so I guess sorry, Dadel Dan. Is like you know, get comfy. Get, like, We've had a lot of fun today. And get comfy though. Is important. Yeah, you don't. Have to, he doesn't have to fucking apologize to you, Mike. This is none of your business. Hey, Adam, good to see you. This is fucking none of your business. Life. Like, would you apply this to other people that have committed crimes? Um. I I think there are some crimes where this makes absolutely no sense. Um, uh, Whoa, but Sakamura! I do think Sakamura. That... Say thank you so very much for the gifted tier one subs. Really appreciate that. Thank you so very much. Holy shit, Lady Kelgana, Anarcho Arachnid, Geeter Trap, Yowlitz, and Milami all just got subs. Fuck yeah! Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. On, on economic crimes, exploitative crimes like this, mm -hmm. which were done for personal profit, it would be a good rule that people not, you know, this is not Wait, hold on, hold on, let's hear Shoplifted. It. This mm -hmm. is not somebody who burglarized a home okay. for desperation. We know, we poor. know. This is someone hey, who set thanks, up Dan. A, a, yeah, I'm dual industrial streaming these days scale now. system to exploit people who are marginalized. Okay. You cannot c pretend to care about marginalized groups and then put this guy on a pedestal. You know, like, and, and what? the reason why I don't what? think, but again, this is also Wait, not a what? run of the mill person. This is someone who is what now are you talking a major about? figure on the left. He's a major figure on the online left, bow of the fifth column. He's being promoted massively for someone like him. If he wants to be a public figure, I do think he needs to go above and beyond what we would do for other people who have been going through some sort of rehabilitation program because he has a platform. This is a stretch, because Mike. He's Come being on. paid to speak. Come on. And that would require now, him I just want to say above listen. And beyond. At this point in time, for all for those of you who know, we did all our research earlier on the stream. We gave this a fair shake, but it's becoming increasingly apparent that Mike was very lazy in his approach here and that this is an empty attempt at getting more drama, okay? in my view mm. come as on a major this is silly figure. now it's just i'm not saying we that did our due be... diligence we all agree what bo did is bad bo served his fucking time 13 years ago and mike is being a fucking weirdo about it ostracized from society forever wait i don't even know the best part yet oh boy here we go because he committed a crime that's ridiculous that's something he says by the way though he does support mm. that he supports a criminal justice Aww. system with uh with ostracization and execution um, that's well, just something that he's, what? I, okay, uh, well, I, I, you know, without hearing it, I wouldn't know. I am not, I am not that. That's him though. That's what okay. he believes. Well, you, you say, I mean, I, I don't know. I'd love to take your word for it for the purposes of this conversation. Um, you know, you got it's maximum very sentence, that, like, yeah. the lefty would support. Uh, the yeah, this penalty. is sort of it shit. Uh, but I know some yeah, people do. Um, but in any, in any case, my, I guess my concern. Okay, let me see. Someone could find that in my chat. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, it's I'll, pretty, I'll watch, I'll watch I think it. he talks about his perfect world. It's like a three minute video. I think it's still up. Um. Um, I, I guess I guess one concern I've got with what you're doing is um, you're kind of taking someone who has been through the current criminal justice system and you're kind of putting this mark on them um, outside of that and saying mark has nothing to do with the criminal justice system. I don't care that he was a felon. I care that he exploited people the same way right. I talk about Jeff Bezos right now for exploiting people. 
I'm not, I'm not uh, attacking him because he's mm -hmm. a felon. He's not a felon. Everything he's doing is legal. Mm -hmm. But wow. I'm calling him an exploiter. Now, what Bo did just so happened to be exploitation plus happened to be illegal as well. So he did get some amount of retributive punishment for it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just because he got retributive punishment doesn't 13 mean years that ago, what he did was he got okay. retributive. Wait be... a second. Hold Again, on. Hold on. Ah, da, does... da, 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 da. 13 years ago, he got retributive punishment and he never went back into the industry. In fact, he explicitly talks about how he did. He chose actively to not go back into the in industry. Come on. True, dirty dit dit slay league. Doesn't apologize. He lies about it, and there's nothing uh, I can see. Oh, obviously, Zoe. And yeah. I have yet to be linked any evidence of what him. What did Bo do 13 years ago? Or, 13 or... years ago, Bo was convicted of alien sm of alien smuggling. Uh, Bo uh Bo was a part of a was a major part of a company that exploited visa workers, charged them money, and paid them shit. He then went to prison for it, and then he. Dra he changed his life completely, left the industry completely, even though he had connections and offers going back in and decided to do something different. Now, 13 years later, he does presentation stuff online, and he's very op he's relatively open about this, although he can't talk about certain aspects of the case. Right about what he did. Sure. Or but so I he guess, claims. You know, the remedy for Regardless, that would be for him it's 13-year-old crime. Apologize for the dishonesty. I know, but that's to, what it's called. Uh, that's what know, the government calls it. I'm sorry. Happened. It seems odd to me that we're now going to say, right, you've got to go and do all yeah, this stuff Yeah, this does sound well. like a proper redemption um, arc. I'm not you know, going to lie. I get I'm sorry. what you're saying. Obviously, what he did was egregious and what he did was bad. But the remedy for that, you know, isn't to then go and... I mean, if, if you think personally that that's what you should do, that's fair enough. That's your right to. But I guess my point is, is like, I think if he apologized and if he did a video, that's fine. But let's say let's say that he doesn't do anything, right? He's not interested in doing any of yeah. it. What, what do we do then, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. like you, you've got these ideas about what should happen um and he may do that he may do some of it he may do none of it but if he doesn't do anything like there's nothing really we can do further from there no this is mike from pa yes on chud i show. mean um like i see a post that he made that uh was on his official website that's now yes archive. yes i have I seen this before mm -hmm. um, we, we did all that earlier he pretty you much just calls it all lies, we're gonna do a whole right? vod on this okay. um He says, if I fell on my sword, I fell. My attorney was able to get some charges thrown out, but by the end of the trial, a jury of 12 people who had been misled by standard proceedings of a courtroom for a few days reached a verdict. I was found guilty on five or six counts. I honestly can't remember and don't care enough to look it up. I mean, just to be clear, like, like that's, you understand, that's, I, mean, I, I agree, on, I agree, I agree like, you, you understand, right? I agree with you. Why are we skipping ahead to the rehabilitation conversation? Because when he doesn't I agree, I agree care about it. I he agree. doesn't care about rehabilitation. Do you think there is something with somebody who takes advantage of all these people? What the like, fuck? Do you, think the, do, you think the, do you think the victims were liars? Good night, Kenna Witchery. Well, Thanks no, for coming no, by. I agree with you. This is, okay, I agree with you that what he did was awful, and the fact that he's lied about it is awful, and he should work to... You know, at the very least, you know, apologize for, for being dishonest and, and painting the honest picture. So you, you say we're kind of moving away from that when I've accepted all of that. Like, I don't know what else you want me yeah, to but say that's about a, that that's, that's, I mean, but here's the thing, like accepting it. But then you don't accept the fact that he hasn't that he's not sufficient. So like for as far as all you guys are concerned, we should just go back to watching Bo videos and just let this no. go down under the rug. No, that come on. I didn't say that at all. I said Yes, because Bo making videos has nothing to do with a crime that he did the time for 13 years ago. Yes. Yes, they're not related. That's like not li that's like not, not listening to a ra a rapper's album because they did a gang crime 15 years ago. That's like not listening to a country musician because they did time for fucking running meth 15 years ago. The, the All right, well, that's why I offered Mike my... Mike just wants to be the shot caller. Ridiculous entitlement. I offered mine thing. You said it was too hard that he shouldn't have to dedicate any amount of time or effort to the victims of human trafficking. Okay, well, you know. So what is your well, okay. alternative? What should I, you okay, do? Let me, I offered mine. Sure. I don't let, know. Let, let do you have any evidence way, right? one way or another, I Tactical think Warhead? it would be ideal if he did something to yeah, exactly, right? towards that cause and to say, look, you know, I caused this, I caused all these problems, I caused this harm. Um, I'm going to donate, you know, uh, 
I don't know, 100 bucks or something, whatever it is, right? To, to that cause, right? Wait, I think ideally... I, did... I didn't say just a drug-related crime. Pete Dandleton, you are actually a moron. Hey, Pete, hey, Pete, I'm going to give you one opportunity. Why don't you come on here and have a conversation with me right now about this topic, or I blast you out of chat. Come on to my Discord and talk to me right now about this tub subject, or I blast you out of my chat because I'm tired of you fucking sitting there and, and throwing peanuts from the side. It's that easy. Just come on and have an actual conversation with me or get the fuck out of my chat. One, those are your two options. I'm waiting. I'm waiting, Pete Dandleton. You got five seconds. All right. Then you're not prepared to be spending time in my chat right now. Either. Very simple. Here you go. We'll get you that. There, there. We'll start with a 10-minute timeout. Actually, yeah, you know what? We'll start with a 10-minute timeout. There you go. Really, he should do that, right? But my question mm -hmm. to you is like, let's say he doesn't. What happens next? And after 10 minutes, if you come back well, and you're still you a dumb shit, I'll was, ban you. Was, well, what do you simple. think is a horrible thing that someone should... These idiots you know, never actually put up. Is there anything? I mean, do you think this rises to the level of being important? Like, if he but, ignores but point, it, should no, you no, just I ignore it as well? I think you're like... missing my point. Like, you know, like, for example... For no, me, I, don't, I don't... Actually, I say in the video, I don't know the answer to this question of what we should do. This is the facts. This is who okay. he is. Make your own conclusions. Well, and no, I guess, I'm asking you, what should we do when people like this are part of the left? Well, there's nothing. That's this is my point. There's nothing really we can do. People will either decide to watch him or not watch him, and that'll be it. Will you it? watch him? Will you watch more Bo videos from now I mean, on, or or no? I don't really watch Bo videos as it is, but um, you know, if there was someone that had done something egregious, yeah. um, Mike is literally been remember about it, remember really remember how Mike said he wasn't trying to cancel, but right now he's trying to get Chud to stop watching Bo videos. This is the weirdest shit I've ever seen. What's going on? Um, that would leave, uh, uh, you know, I Weasel. probably not watch that person's videos anymore. No. Um, I think honestly- in, in, Would you in encourage other people to watch the videos? Would you speak out against that person? Um, hmm. I mean, I don't really have any, like, I, you know, there's p lots of people that have done bad stuff. I don't speak out against every single person that's done a bad thing. Um, you know, I wouldn't personally like recommend his videos very convenient what do you mean because... very convenient that's just a fact of course like this i mean I, 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 no 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 but you know about this so you you've also made money off of it by putting it on your stream so you've now you've now monetized it you've slapped a label on it you we sold it wait a second so now you're involved hang on a, hang on a now second. you're involved in that's it. very rich coming from you mike from pa like we all do it okay you me Destiny, right that's why i'm Bosch. speaking out i'm i'm being consistent Oh my god. You know, I spoke out about it and now I'm yeah, trying to get a resolution. Okay, but like, you know, you've, I've got nothing to do with Bo. I've never, I've, ever, I've watched like three of his videos. You do now. You watch my video. Yeah, you're commenting but, on no, it. No, wait, you have, but you're I've, on I've, my platform. But I've never promoted him, okay? I've never promoted the guy. I've never spoken to him, right? I've got no more obligation to speak out about this guy than I have anyone else that's done a bad thing that I vaguely am aware of, you know? You can't obligate people Mike to is so speak pathetic. out against someone. That's up to them, isn't it? Like, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm obligating you because Probably you true, profited from it. Now you're obligated to speak out. Okay. One way or the well, other. How would, okay, you either then, say, how would you make me? Good guy. How would you make me? Like, well, this is ridiculous. How would you make me do that? Like, I, could... I think it's a moral. I think it's a, obviously I don't have power over you. I think it's a moral statement of your character. What a loser! Chet called him out. Chet called like, him out. Watch Bo or not. I don't care. Fucking lip, have lip, lip you, right? wait, Mike wait, over wait here. Wait a second, though. We're speaking weak about Mike it right now. Here. Mike the from Weak. And I've said, yeah, I wouldn't watch his videos anymore. Um, It would leave a sour taste in my mouth. Um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't promote them. This, no, I wouldn't promote them. Sure, but you know, like, what do you expect? Nah, to this see? is you're fun, like a week fun, long fun. I'm having fun with stream this. Talking about how after oh, this we'll this do something more fun. Really bad. Like, we're Don't doing worry. it now. We're making the content now, and I've said my piece about it. Like, what more do you expect from me? So I think, I think what we're fundamentally coming down to is you don't really believe that anybody should be judged or. In any way, kind Murder of. Murder Monday was a bust, unfortunately. You know, if they Ryoma. do horrible things, that's everybody you know, kind was of busy, unfortunately. We, you know, whatever. Good, you know, that, what? That's what absurd. Nah, that's ridiculous. You're just saying that to make me sound bad. I feel like much. No, of no, no. I mean, but that's your. That's the. Effect I feel. Of your I position, feel like much of your misconversation. Wait, wait, don't interrupt. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let okay, me. go on. So I mean, you've been speaking a lot, but go on. Is, I know I'm speaking. I know I'm speaking a lot because I've. 
you you have character you're kind of like disempowering yourself and being like well i don't have to comment about every bad thing and i don't really watch his videos so it's you know i don't really care and mike you know, thinks he's the funniest should, guy in the world well, and he's mike one of the most unfunny people he has to spend effort and time countering human trafficking uh, I don't think that's really so. We can't really force him to do that. So if he doesn't, well, dude, you don't oh well. know anything about well, this not, guy. Oh, well, like, kind we, of, we can't. That's kind of what I'm hearing from you. Yes, yeah, but there's yes, nothing yes, we can do. Pratt. He's on YouTube. I can't deplatform him. Like you know, it's all I can do is say, yeah, Bo it seemingly has lied about this stuff. Um, he doesn't really seem to have clarified. Um, you know, I, I'm not someone that watches his videos. I'm not someone that's going to recommend his videos. That's it. End of story. What else am I supposed to do? I don't understand. Okay, so so okay, so. You're just gonna be kind of silent on Bo because you don't really care about him. But, and it's, you know, but I'm you doing a stream I mean, I mean, now. You obviously can't care about every injustice in the world, you know. Yeah, he does. Chud, he looks but so I, bad. I, I just don't understand. Like, okay, he looks so bad. What would you like me to do that I haven't done? This like, is sad. You know, do you want me to do I would streams like about you to him? say that Mike. Here's here's an example. Mike found damning evidence surrounding Bo's past. As remember, remember. Hey, by the way, remember when remember when RGR tried to do this exact same thing to Lumi? That was fucking weird. As a exploiter. Sorry, just a random throwback. Immigrants. It's reminded me. For profit. Real fucking Mike from PA and Mo Bo has not told the truth about it, and I am disturbed about who this man is and his pattern. That'll of never happen. Basically, Joe. misleading people about his history and hiding the. Wait, fact yeah, that almost he was nobody saw that. Uh, RGR went on Lumi's show and then tried to get Lumi to to basically denounce me. Yeah, all right. I know. Don't worry. Just, just thought it would be funny. Just thought it would be funny to bring that back. In alien traffic, it was shit. It was fucking cringe as shit. Uh, and I don't think that's acceptable. And I want nothing to do with him until I see some serious steps taken okay. to rectify the harms done and to correct yes. the lies he's made to his audience about his past. So, so you want me to that's do what I've already done, but in the right words for you to please you, basically. That's what you're saying. I mean, have, I mean it's not about pleasing Zeta me. Male. I mean, this is, this is one of the things Seemingly that's really it is. odd Seemingly about it the is. I could beat what? you up, Vosh. This is about... Chud, denounce, denounce Bo now. Denounce Bo now. Right. Which <laughs> is bad, terrible, awful, egregious. Yep. And profiting as a major content creator on the left and is being put forward as some sort of chud oh, de-radicalizer, exposing the left to major risk Cancel because committee. of what he has done in his own past. Everything yeah. You can't is argue Vosh that he's good for the left Probably. to persuade when at the same time, at any point, someone could drop a nuclear bomb proving that he's exploited hundreds of women for his own personal profit. Hey, that thanks for the dono. Pretty Appreciate bad, that. right? Appreciate well, that, well, Derek, I mean, to the sure, He's not showing the remorse. He's not clarified. Like, I agree that's bad, and he should correct that, ideally. But, you know, the idea that just because I've, I've done a couple of streams about it, I've got some moral obligation to like... like I've, All I've... right, well, I think, I, think, I think we've come to a, I think we've come to a conclusion, you know? Okay, you well, know, he's well, bad. You yeah. agree that Bo, you agree that Bo of the Fifth Column is a bad actor. No. And we shouldn't watch his videos. We no. Should... That, it, no. There is nothing about what, how, look at that jump. We went from Bo did something bad in the past to Mike now saying Bo is a bad actor. This is so pathetic. This is so pathetic. Boredom. I mean, I've come to the conclusion that I'm not gonna watch his videos. I'm not gonna recommend his videos. Um, I would welcome people to look at the evidence and come to whatever conclusion they wish. I'm, you oh, know, okay. it's Fair funny enough. to me because you That's said- That's all I wanted people to do. Well, That's there we go. But you, you said at the start of the video, this isn't about like can canceling or whatever, but it seems like to me you, you do, you know, want to make it so that people don't watch his stuff anymore and, and stop engaging with him. But, okay, I just have one question. Didn't you say he kind of already paid his debt to society in your mind, like with by going to prison? Like, well, eh. okay, in my in my mind, honestly, no, I don't think I don't think that, that the current system means people pay pay their debt to society, right? I, I have a completely different framework for how I think justice should work. But you know, we live in. Bo was involved in in alien what a crime called alien smuggling, which involved. Uh, a bunch of fraudulent visas and exploit deep and deeply exploiting immigrant workers. In a society, and as a society, we have kind of agreed, you know, thirteen we years like ago, it or not, that prison is the framework by which we we judge that. So, if someone goes to prison for a period of time, they come out. That that you know, 
is is it in terms of their debt to society? Now, should there so, be more so, rehabilitation? Yeah, I know we Pink Walk, it makes no sure, sense. Sure, but there isn't, and we can't meaningful have, meaningful have an impact on. Yeah, that that's all he's doing. So, like, packs so you would pathetic. say that like the Sacklers who have profited from the opioid epidemic and thousands of people dying, you know, if they pay like you know a couple million dollar fine. Yeah, that's probably know, true, Adam Flores. Thank good. you. You would be like, all right, well, the Sacklers paid their debt to society. You know, I don't like it, but that's our system, and. You know that's okay. They're, um, they're fine. Well, I mean, you know, if I mean, this is a different thing, right? Because it sounds like these people have caused a lot more death and a lot more destruction. Um, I would still say that, yeah, by the framework we exist under, they've paid the debt as to, to that test. Well, there I might, you go. Have, I mean, I I might have a criticism. Uh, I'm, I might be like, okay, they've not done enough. They should ideally do there this remedy. Go. What do you mean? I, what do you mean? There you go. Like, yeah, I agree that I could say they should do this remedy to fix it further. You know, but by the framework of our society, they have paid their debt. And, you know, obviously, if it's I don't know who these people are, if they're like wealthy, if they're like a well, wealthy people or something, you know, I know the criminal justice system is slanted so that wealthy people get let, let off the hook. So I would probably include that in my critique and maybe use it as an example. Hey, to show how someone glass. who's wealthy gets treated it's been very a wild differently ride than today. someone that's poor. But it doesn't change the fundamental fact that we live in a society and, you know, that is how the justice system works. I I, okay, so I think you and I fundamentally have a kind of a different view on on social relations and society and our obligations to it. Mm -hmm. I think that we have deeper relations that go beyond whatever the like current legal framework are, and that um, especially on like for example, you know, if somebody is like a scab and they cross picket lines all the time, to me that would be so morally disgusting that I wouldn't want to associate with them and I wouldn't consider them a member of the left because they knowingly cross picket lines to help break strikes and bust unions right you on the other hand since what if they what if they did that 15 years ago and then they decided to become a union organizer because they regretted what they did in the past fucking idiot. that's legal i seem that mike you have mike no is just fucking stupid like what this this displays is that more than anything mike is a fucking idiot problem with it and you know they you know whatever they get to make their own decisions and you're kind also, of also his editing sucked that video blew with them no, um, and that's, no, that's, that's a difference. But there's still, that, I have a different oh standard than you. I have a different standard than you. That's that's, all. that's like, absurd. Like I don't say... think that the legal system is what the way we find justice. No, in our neither do I. And um, I've said that numerous times to you, and you seem to want to ignore that fact. No, I don't think the criminal justice system is a good way for for measuring or gauging rehabilitation or whether someone has you know fully paid the debt to society. But my point is that you know that's the system we live under, and like. I'd like to change it. I'd like to make it better. Um, that was a pre-recorded video. Oh my god, Danny! To remedy the, the harm that he's caused. But my key point here is like, you know, there's no meaningful power we've got to really do that. So if if Bo doesn't, I think, like, I think in a nutshell, I'm calling out a powerful leftist content creator for acting in opposition to his stated values mm -hmm. without remorse. 13 years ago, before he was a leftist, before he was even a YouTube creator, before YouTube even existed. Okay, I'm sorry. I gotta go pee. I gotta go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. I gotta fucking go to the bathroom. Just fucking chill. Nobody go anywhere. Stay. He's done nothing to correct it other than suffer Jesus the punishment for the crimes he committed that was imposed by the state. And to me as a leftist, that's not sufficient. And I would like to see like real genuine remorse contrition and a statement that was true and he stopped would stop misleading people about who he is and i think clarity and honesty and transparency on this issue would be helpful uh i want people to be able to come into the left who have a bad past who've made mistakes uh we all are imperfect mm -hmm. i believe in rehabilitation and restor restorative justice but one of the elements of you know truth and reconciliation is honesty it's forthrightness mm -hmm. it's contriteness it's remorse and I've seen none of that. And I think there's a lot of people that are economically kind Chad, of you want to come on after this? You know, uh, to, if Bo is a fan of theirs or Bo comes on their stream and Bo has a large platform, you know, it makes them money. Damn, uh, I'm not going to see much of an increase in my engagement from this whatsoever. I mean, just looking at my viewership, it's a bog standard day for me. This is not boosting me. And I didn't expect it to boost me. Mm -hmm. That's not what this is about. This is about teaching my audience about what is, is and isn't acceptable in yeah, my community true what isn't it but also i'm pulling biggie numbers these you know, days my conception of being a leftist and what oh sick yeah come means. on after this debate and i have then, a Chad. hard time accepting we'll talk. him as a leader and major content creator at while he is able to act with impunity and without anybody really calling him out for this i wouldn't hold this standard for anybody on the right if i found out somebody on the right 
who was a major content creator like Steven Crowder had been convicted of human trafficking, 2,200 people, excuse me, human smuggling for the purpose of economic exploitation. I would not be okay with this. And I would be calling it out. And I think most people on the left would too. It's just kind of sad to me that so many people see instances like this and they immediately go into team mentality. Mm -hmm. They immediately go, whether or not do I like Mike from PA, let me attack the messenger, rather than really confronting well, what Bo I, did I like femme people, and his so. lack of remorse sure. doing it. I mean, I, I don't really feel like I've done that. Like, you know, I, I, I don't think you have done this in this conversation, but I don't feel like you, I don't know. I think you feel pretty disempowered about what we can do. And, uh, you well, know, it's not that I feel it's, we, like I know, you know, it's, well, it's like, I know we're disempowered. The, the like how, how would you, how would you make it? If, if Bo doesn't do anything with this, how would, yeah, Mike is a vert. Yeah. You, no, I, no, I no. I think, answer, Mike right? I think is still a thrall. Should start to always call will be to make statements and more and more people should start talking about how he didn't make a statement. Even when the evidence came out, he's been lying and dissembling because his strategy will be to ignore hmm. things most likely. Maybe. Uh, sugar glass. And if he I does put out a statement, it's because he's told that he needs to, to protect his brand. Right. Okay. So if other leftists just kind of let him put it under the rug, that says something really gross about our movement and our lack of accountability for bad actors within our movement. Sure. Um, again, remember, this is not just that, that he was convicted. It's also that he lies and dissembles about what he did. Do you think Mike is just categorically stupid and for helping people when in reality he exploited them? Uh, yeah. So I, there you go. I know. I, yeah, I agree. I think that's all I got to say. Okay. That's all I got to say on that. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I mean, yeah. I mean, like I say, I mean, I, I just don't understand why distancing ourselves from bad faith actors who human trafficked or, or you know, or or you know, alien smuggled for the purpose of ex ex economic no, exploitation. I'm nothing to do, I'm nothing to do with a guy. Like, like why a, that's a big deal? Why that's so? What's such a hard ass? I don't know why that's such I, a hard ass. But why I don't, but I don't even. Hard ass? But I don't even fucking know the dude. I literally have got no interaction with the fella. I've watched a few of his videos, like one or two even. I've never spoken to him. I've not like he's never been on my stream. Like, there's literally no association there whatsoever. Like, you're asking me to like. Well, would you say that there are people on this platform? That hey, Marisi Moti Totes. Um, yeah, sure. And I think that you know what I'd ask of those people are they are they are those people being good faith in their conversations um, about me? Well, I, I mean, I don't know. Say? I've not I've not heard mm. people's conversations yeah, okay. Okay. Um, about it, so I can't really comment. Um, but what I'd say to those people Damn, is, you know, nice. look at the totality of what Bo has done. Uh, you know. And if you've got a personal connection there, maybe have a have a chat with the guy, and look to yeah, I, I kind of you know, agree, pink see, one, see if but issue a statement or something that clarifies we'll and points out the things that he did wrong. Sure, like, just plain stupid. But yep. again, like you know, I don't have any ability How, to influence. Like I don't even this. like. Um, is this I, is this well, I think you're selling is this ideal short, clout you know, vampiring? I feel like this is could, bad could, clout you vampiring. You could influence the people around you, and they and you would never know how many other people might be influenced by it. But if you choose not to engage, that's your decision. You know. But the other issue so I've got is go. I, I don't want to instigate, like I'm very against like dog pilings and stuff like that. And it's like, I would hate to think that I've Really? Seen... Man, that's that's news to me. What makes you say, what makes you think that? I I mean, come on, man. <laughs> but anyway, go on. No, no, tell, tell me what you mean. The guy literally said he would disappear you, didn't he? Yeah, that was the Justin from the internet or one of those, uh, one of those anarchists said that he would disappear me or something. Uh, What's that, that got to do with that me? That Bo knows people that no, nothing to do with you. This is it's just the you know other people that you know. No, for example, wait. I published the video. Hold wow, on, let me let me example. No, no, this example. is about me. You, 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 it's I... not about you. Well, that Chud, it's not about you. Okay, uh, go on. What? So there it is. That's the that's the end of the day. I mean, I think I think I think that we've what he just he, you end. let him get uh, away with that. That Bo is a disgusting human being. But no, no, you, um, I, I can't I, believe I you said, let him I get said, away I with said that. I'm against dog piling, and you seem to show like you were like shocked by that. And then when I asked you for specifics, you talked about another content creator. Oh, okay, so, good. You're you know, getting him on it. Do do you or do you not think I'm against dog piling? No, I oh, sure you're. If you say so, you're against it. Yeah, I, it. yeah, fair enough. There we go. Sorry for you, buddy. That's okay. Sorry for triggering you. I apologize. Well, it's not a case you're getting Come on. Fuck yeah, Mike. Yeah, no, no, it's a case of you felt it was unfair. I apologize for that. There we go. Thank you. Um, uh, all right, everybody. Uh, that was that was Chud logic. Thanks, bud. Thanks uh, a lot. Ha no, have a good one. Mike's greasier than his own hair. All right, there Chud, get on here. Let's talk. I gotta talk to you about this, Chud. Chud logic, the one and only Chud of logic, logic of the Chud. Come on in.
Here, I'll call you, and then we can just chit chat. Here, I'm calling you. I'm gonna. All call right. You. Oh, okay. All right. All right. We're ready now. Okay, everybody. All right. Here okay. we go. <clears throat> Privy, Privy, <laughs> Chud Logic, you come now before the leftist tribunal. Do you denounce the one and only bow of the fifth column? Yes or no? I mean... Will I, you watch his videos? <laughs> Will you share them to your timeline? <laughs> Will you I... ensure that he has done restitution to the victims of his crimes? <laughs> Answer I mean, the court! I, I order! Really order! <laughs> That's it, Imp! Shut up! Order! Answer the question, Chud Logic! Um, I mean, it's a bit weird. I don't watch his videos anyway, so it's not really... It's like a bit weird! Anything. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Are you trying like... to avoid the inquiries of the court? It's a simple question! <laughs> Um, yes or no? no, no. Will you share his videos? Will you press the thumbs up button on his videos? Or will you I mean, push the do not recommend this channel to me anymore button on YouTube? I, I thought this was supposed to be a conversation and it's turned into some sort of inquisition. It like, is an inquisition. I believe in the future of the left, and if we can't be sure that our content creators, such as Chud Logic, are going to press the I do not want to see this content on their timeline button anymore, then how are we going to ensure that the left it will be pure? Um, I mean, I, I don't know, but this is a complicated issue, I guess. Um, you know, it's a lot. To, it's, I'm sorry, I, I submit myself to the Inquisition, okay? You yes. do what you wish. Very well, then. You've been found guilty. You are no longer allowed Wait, on the what? left. Banned! Wait, what? what am I Wait, what I'm sorry. Wrong? Have we made a mistake? <laughs> Did you say you were going to say, I do not want to see this content on, the high, on, on my timeline anymore? Um... I mean, sh sure, I guess. Very like, well! Uh, <laughs> Show that the records have been changed! Chud Logic has been c cured or purified of all of his crimes and shall be allowed back on the left! Chud Logic, official leftist, has been found not guilty by this court! There we go. Alright, well now we Excellent. can sort this out. Uh, if anybody questions your leftistness, you can ensure- you can let them know that the leftist tribunal has found you leftist enough for now. Oh, good, 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 good stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, like, what the what the fuck? Like, listen, I was just fucking vibing. I was just chilling, you know. I was watching this video about it actually. Okay, right. Let me just explain like the series of events. I don't know how much of it you watched. Right? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, we watched. We watched from the moment he came on. We didn't watch enough, your yeah. review because I did. I did my own kind of review thing, and then I heard about <clears> you <throat> having a debate, and it was, we were kind of doing stuff at the same time. So. Yeah, no, that's that's fair enough. Yeah. Um. So yeah, re really simple stuff. Um. Basically, I yesterday talked a bit about well, not. Yeah, yesterday, for, yeah, yesterday, um, Sunday, I spoke about this, um, you know, because I'd heard Mike had covered some stuff about Bo. I went onto Mike's stream and it said, like, you know, um, Bo the Fifth column is a, is a human trafficker. I was like, what the fuck? So I looked into it and I did my own analysis. I thought, I don't really know what's happened here. I don't really understand. You know, maybe there's a battle that's happened, but, you know, seemingly Bo's moved on. Anyway, mm -hmm. so earlier today, people we're saying, oh, um, Mike's done a video about it, Mike's done a video about it, Mike's done a video about it. So I got around to kind of um, watching it. And uh, whilst I was watching it, Mike came into my chat, right? Yeah. And was arguing with people in my chat, you know, and I was just does. trying to cover the, I was just trying to cover the, I was just trying to, I was just vibing, you know, just yeah. watching the video, give, giving some of my takes. And so I said, look, Mike, you know, clearly you've grieved here. Why don't you come on stream and talk about it? So I finished watching the video, he came on stream and then, you know, I thought it was just going to be a chat. We're going to talk about our perspectives, but straight away it was like, boom. You need you know, to like, announce. Coming from me pretty hard. Yeah, and it was just like, whoa, like slow down. Like, you know, I'm just chilling, my dude. You know, like I don't even fucking know anything about this or this guy or anything. Um, yeah, and, and, and like I feel like even though I, I feel I was fairly critical, like I said, you know, look, I'm concerned he's not being honest with his audience. I mean, you know, I'd say I don't know the full story, right? I don't know all the ins and outs of it. Maybe he's made a video or more content about it. I don't know, but you know. I'm kind of big personally on a personal level about people being as honest as they can with the audience. So like, you know, if he, if that clip of him on that podcast is the only time he's really talked about it, like, yeah, you know, I would hope he'd make more clarification. And if he doesn't, I probably wouldn't watch his videos anymore, but the do thing you, is I don't watch his videos anyway. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you feel like, do you feel like Mike did his due diligence? Cause I felt like Mike's video was very weak. Sure. Yeah. Um, hmm. I think, 
and and he just just so we know like sure. just so that the, like some context is given the reason there's a mm -hmm. couple of reasons for that i had my criticisms while i was watching it um that and and i i promise you the, the criticisms i brought against it were not the ones i made at the beginning in which i said that he looked like he was uh going to strangle me to death with very clammy hands and that he looked like he could uh probably fuel a fry later with just the grease from his hair and that he looked like Dwight Schrute's estranged cousin. Um, uh, but none of those were the critiques of the video. Those were just critiques of Mike in general. Um, sure. But, uh, okay. you know, my concern about this whole uh, situation was that, mm -hmm. uh, like, I don't know. This is an event that happened a long time ago. It doesn't seem mm -hmm. like Mike did any effort to actually find out if, like, what Bo has done. Uh, he also mm. didn't include like numerous exam numerous examples of times when Bo did actually express remorse and regret. Um, one of which was, um, in fact, in the video that he cited, where I will agree that like it appears that that Bo, at least in 2016 on that podcast, was being you know sort of whitewashing what happened. He was misrepresenting yeah. it for sure, favorably to himself. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know how far you want to go. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know anything else about the context of that pan of that that uh <clears throat> podcast but even in that podcast he said that after he left prison he got offers to go back into that work and that he said he didn't want to do it because he didn't he he said it wasn't it wasn't good he didn't want to go back in and, mm. and live that life anymore and um so there's that and then also i've had multiple people who are longtime bow watchers come in here and say Bo has talked about this before like and we found out yes he has in a video from 2019 which i found with ease that be the reason we found it was because Mike had that video. In that video, Mike uh, fucking Bo talks about it, and he talks about how he doesn't want to talk about stuff that happened in the past, about bad stuff that happened. He did not downplay what he did at all. He just said, I wasn't convicted of of tra of uh, human trafficking. I was convicted of alien smuggling. Uh, and mm -hmm. there they are, believe it or not, a different thing. And that's, all, that's about all he said. So... I, I feel like like Mike really jumped the gun on this one. You know? Sure. Um, yeah, sure. I, I think, you know, the thing is, the thing about the, the, the sort of honesty and stuff, I, I guess that's more of like a personal thing anyway. Like, you know, and the thing is, is like you're saying there, I, I don't I don't know all of Bo's content. I don't know what he's spoken about, you know? Yeah. He's released what, hundreds of hours of content. I'm not going to be able to sit through all that and, and just to dig up where he's talked about it, you know? Um, so, 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 yeah, like, you know, I, I don't know like yeah if if he if if that podcast is the thing then then yeah that probably isn't that isn't great and we should look at that but but if there's other stuff as well and he's demonstrated remorse then in some way like yeah also but out of curiosity I do you know when that what, podcast was shot uh no it was was it 2016 i think 2016 like five years ago early 2016 so i don't know like yeah <sighs> Uh, so earlier, and, and here, you can let me know what you think about mm, this sure. hypothetical, okay? So imagine that you have some guy, and, mm. and you know, maybe he's like 24, 25, or whatever. And he is, he gets involved in drug running and shit, and ends up killing someone in a gunfight, okay? Goes to prison, mm. does his time, leaves prison become doesn't go back into running drugs and instead becomes a musician rap artist hip-hop artist whatever uh should they be discouraged from having that platform because of a crime that they did their time for um no i don't think well yeah this is the thing i don't think they should actually be discouraged like if if okay right that seems like, like to me that seems like the the perfect example of somebody Re being like being re well maybe not being rehabilitated by the system but experiencing reform on their own grounds right like yeah. Bo's channel doesn't involve doing immigration uh, work it doesn't involve employees he's a solo podcaster right well, well yeah you know and and the thing is as well as like um you know it's, it's Rivi, shut the person. fuck up sorry i'm sorry to interrupt you Rivi, okay. please shut the fuck up you'd never listen oh my god just shut the fuck up i was talking about specifically a guy killing someone in a drug deal shut the fuck up jesus fucking christ i'm sorry there's been like um, three or four people okay. who've been pushing my buttons i know the rules don't interact with chat when you're fucking talking, but i can't handle it anymore 
don't worry about that. It's all good. It's fine. Um, yeah, I think it would come down to personal decisions. So, like, you know, if someone, you know, looks at it and was like, do you know what? I don't want to listen to that. That's up to them. The issue comes for me when you're trying to enforce that on other people, you know, yeah. when you're saying you've got to go and discourage people. And it's like, no, I fucking don't. Like, you know, I'm not the fucking arbiter of morality. Like, it's up to other people how they determine things and whether they want to engage with someone or not, you know? And the thing is, for me, it's a re- weird question to ask. Would you watch Bro's content? I don't watch Bro's content anyway. Like, I'm not even subscribed to him on YouTube. And that's not because I think anything of the guy, other than I just don't know him and I don't really watch his content. It's not really, I don't yeah. think it's really aimed at me, you know? I think, yeah. I think there's a particular type of person he's going for with that content. So, you know, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just like, you kind of ask me, you're going to stop watching his content? Well, I don't already. Like, would you though? Like, I don't know. It's a very difficult thing. Um, but But I think, you know, broadly, you know, Maybe Bo could do more to, to like clarify, and it'd be good if he d- does. Sure. But in any case, it's it's a moot point because if he doesn't do that, you know, what sort of thing can we in- enforce? Um, okay. And and it comes down to this issue that I think, to be honest, that there's a broader issue with this. Mm-hmm. We say things like someone needs to be accountable, someone needs to apologise, they should do all this stuff, um, and then it's like, but what if they don't? And we don't have an answer for that, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and so we kind of just hope that people do the right thing. But if they don't, like, it's not a social club. Like, they can still do what they want to do um, unless you want to make an argument that we should be, like, so-called cancelling people and dogpiling on social media and telling the terrible people and all this other stuff. Like, it doesn't really seem like we've got many avenues to, to do this, you know? Yeah. Um, so here, let me try pushing something to follow that, um, to follow mm. that question up. So, um, so first of all, yeah, I agree accountability online is uh, um, a hilariously underthought about um, a, a hilariously underthought about uh, subject. I think that people don't actually have a realistic approach to it um, mm-hmm. most of the time. Um, and uh, like, I think it is hard. I don't think it's easy to have accountability, but there is one way, which is basically canceling someone. But I think mm. what Mike was kind of doing was he was trying to say we should cancel Bo without saying we should cancel Bo because he told you not to watch his stuff anymore he told you not to recommend him to other people he's asking for you to kill his channel or to help kill his channel sure well the thing is I I don't you know I don't mind it like okay I I don't recommend it but the issue for me is that's like a personal thing if I don't want to recommend that's like kind of up to me right but but, but, I mean I think I think you can agree that there there are some situations where I think that's justified right yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if someone mm-hmm. turns out to be some, you know, horrible person, you know, and, and they, you know, are currently beating their wife, mm-hmm. you know, and they, they show no sign they're going to stop. Like, yeah, I'm not going to, you know, that's too, that's like way too far for me. Like, I'm not going to associate with that, you know, and I'm not going to put someone in, in that circle of content, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but even then, I think that, that I would still have the same perspective of I'm, I'm going to do what I want to do, but, you know, it seems like Mike wants me to go out and almost spread this and then say that you can't watch the content, you can't watch the content, you can't watch the content. And it's like, you know, first of all, I think that is like definitionally like we're getting into cancel culture type territory, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like the, the whole point of cancel culture originally was that you stop engaging with people's content that you think have done something wrong because they're not held accountable in other ways. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, so there's that. But also I think like we have to have some merit to the fact he's gone to prison as well. No, like yeah. that's surely got to come into our calculation Absolutely. here. Even if we think it's not perfect, like yeah. he spent time he, well, in Well, he went to jail. prison for, at the time, the maximum sentence. And we looked it up just out of curiosity. And the average sentence for the same <clears throat> crime is 18 months. That's the wow. average sentence for people doing the same crime. Now, I'm sure, you know, I don't know where his, his fell, on on the scale you know he might have done it you know he might have had had multiple counts of it but the average sentence for humans for alien smuggling is uh is 18 months in the u.s that's from federal from that's from the federal crime statistics so you know i don't know it's it seems to me like mike was very sloppy in this and also Mm -hmm. very weirdly in the conversation with you it felt very weirdly parasocial Here's another thing. Let me let me see what your thoughts are on this. Okay. So, uh imagine for let's let's all imagine together a quick hypothetical. Let's say there is a there was a there's like a a guy who joins the military when he's 20 or so and he's super patriotic, really super right-wing, goes to war and he knows he's going to kill people in war. He goes to war. He kills people in war. 
he comes back home from war and he realizes like like his experiences traumatize him like horrifically and he realizes mm -hmm. that he was totally mistaken as a young kid to go into that okay so 10 years later he decides to make a channel he's a leftist now and he's against imperialism and all this shit should we hold the fact that he killed people in his job that he willingly took with the united states at a time when his belief system was completely different should we hold him to the same standard that mike is holding Bo to because i mean the way i look at it it you know let's say that all will control for everything he didn't have to go in the military he chose to because he thought it would be cool and uh it just turns out that it was really horrible and he found out it was terrible mm -hmm. and that his belief system was sort of peeled back should should we just stop that person from creating content should that person not be allowed to be considered a, a lefty content creator yeah i mean well this is the thing I, I agree exactly with the premise of what you're saying right and and it's like you know no no i don't think so because my viewpoint of the world is like you know people are primarily the outcome of their circumstances and you know for whatever reason that person ended up in the military you know i don't see that as like you know you don't wake up one day and go i'm going to join the military there's stuff that influences you to do that you know mm -hmm. um so, so, so like even if he didn't need to but he ended up joining and he did that stuff and he comes out and he has a change of heart and he's you know stuff like that i guess in that situation where he's not actually committed a crime and there's not been like a criminal sentence dished out you know i would like that that person would be remorseful or maybe do some content about it or say look you know here's the situation here's what i did it was wrong um you know i strongly advise like you know against this sort of action in the future from people etc etc et that's kind of what i'd like to see in order to really get behind kind of supporting someone like that um but 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 yeah i mean at the end of the day i think again it just comes down to personal choice right like you decide mm -hmm. Are you happy to support this person? Um, yeah. You know, and, and if you're not, you, you don't. But this idea that, that you've then got to perpetrate it and go around and tell everyone like a town crier, you know, or like so going around saying this person's bad. Yeah, that's just is so ridiculous to me. And and yeah, I don't know. Well, to me, the way that Mike is approaching this seems to me to be counter to uh, what he claims to want to accomplish. Uh, it mm. just seems like he dug into somebody's personal past dug up some unrelated dirt that has nothing to do with them now that they did their time for. Uh, and by the way, he made the claim that Bo was unrepentant. That is clearly not the case. Literally today, Bo tweeted about it, um, saying that he that if he had met him his past self today, he probably would curb stomp himself. That's a pretty severe thing to say about your past self. Like, I don't yeah. think there's anything I would say that about. Like, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of shit that I, I think my, my, my past self was pretty dumb you know what i mean but i i can't imagine that's pretty strong that's a pretty strong denouncement of your of your past self if you say that you would like sort of mur literally murder your past i'm not saying that like it, it gets you out of, it gets you out of anything but i don't i think the idea that he that like mike's argument very much hinges on him being completely un unrepentant and it really doesn't seem like that's actually the case so i feel like not only should like, not only do I think that lefties, like, should probably think a little harder about this, but I kind of feel like, um, I, I kind of feel like we should be doing the opposite of what Mike is doing, which is to say we should be encouraging people who at one point did something horrible and then cho cho chose to leave that industry, ch chose not to go back into it, and are now doing something completely different with a completely different worldview. That is growth. That is basically the quintessential idea of growth, right? Mm. Like somebody brought up in the chat over here on the Twitch chat that, um, oh yeah, Ali Menthol. Should we cancel Chelsea Manning because she was previously helping the army, army monitor drone targets and gather <laughs> bomb raid intel until Chelsea came across the footage, you know, of 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 the the killing of innocents and then leaked that, like had a moral crisis and leaked that. Like I think that's like, like. I think that going to prison can absolutely be a moral crisis for somebody. I think that that Mike's story, re, 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 like Mike's case, um, relies almost exclusively on the idea that that Bo is like a a permanently blighted person. 
you know? Yeah, I, I definitely got that impression, you know, yeah. um, b- b- because, you know, and, and the thing is that I found frustrating with that conversation too, is he just wanted to completely reject the fact this person had served time. But it's like, well, yeah. you know, your issue is not with, with, with both then. Your issue is with society and the fact that we structure society in such a way that we see, you know, prison sentences as time served and paying back the debt to society, which, by the way, I, I think probably is totally wrong and we should change that. But, you yeah. know, that's, you know, it's a bit unfair. The way I put it is like, it's almost like he wants to have a two-tier system, right? Mm-hmm. So someone goes to prison for five years or something they've done, and they come out, and then there's like a bunch of lefties with a minivan, right? And they're yeah. like, right, you've served, you served your fucking, you know, your capitalism time. Now you got to serve your leftism time. Yeah. Get in the van, and they drives he drives around and fucking he's got to go fix all these problems for for this. You know, it's, it's like, but he's already done one thing which isn't perfect and should change. But you, you can't expect someone to then do a whole other bunch of shit. You know, and, and also like, who's deciding all of this? Like, who the fuck are you to decide this? Like, you're not yeah. the fucking moral arbiter of everything, you right? Know? Like, exactly. Doesn't fuck. it kind of feel just like Mike just wants to get to decide who's the left and who's not? And like, this is like a weird, desperate, petty, toxically masculine, <clears throat> catastrophically stupid way of going about that. Just like almost everything else that Mike kind of engages in. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing. It, I'm glad like, you agree with me on that, by the way. <laughs> the, the 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 thing is for me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, I, I've got no, so, so, you know, just on a personal level, yeah. you know, before that conversation, I listened to a little bit. It was like, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna speak to Chud Logic. We're gonna see if we've got some good faith person, and we're gonna give Chud a chance. Yeah. I'm like, motherfucker, who are you? Just because you got a few fucking viewers, you think you're fucking hot shit? Fuck off with that nonsense. I don't fucking play those games, you know. Um, but anyway, I was trying to be cordial for the conversation and stuff. Anyway, apparently, I've not listened to this, but I was told that after the conversation finished, as soon as it was hung up. He said, "Like I'm dumb and I'm a bad actor and I'm, I'm bad faith." Yeah, you and all these insults else. at me, yeah. and and you know, I was just like, "Hang on a sec!" Like I, I've ended the call, you know, gentlemen's rules. We have a handshake and we walk off, and he's gone and fucking stabbed me in the back with fucking insults, and I'm just like, "I'm not going to play that game," you know. I'm, I'm, you know, not interested in stooping to his level. Well, why? You know? well, why? Why, Chad? Are you scared? Are you scared that he'll beat you up in IRL? <laughs> Haven't you seen the size <laughs> of his wrists? <laughs> You know, they got to be at least, they got, his wrist got to be at least as big as a pencil. The, like, the thing I think is he could do is, some real damage. The, like, the thing know. is, for me is, is, is I, you know, I, I, you know, think of it as like, we've had a conversation and, and if you had issue and thought it was being bad faith, bring it up, but you well, can't. I, mean, I did just put you through the tribunal, after. so. Yeah. That was, that was a good meme. Yeah, you um, probably, you probably saw the video where he punched that couch and you were like, fuck, that could be me. Oh my God. <laughs> like, he might knock me back a few inches. Jesus. But but I mean I mean that's 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 a fair point right like what is he he thinks he can do in this situation anyway like he's got literally no power you know it's it's I don't know it's just so odd to me that he's so ra- rabid on this and and the other thing I think really annoyed me and this really annoys me when when you speak to certain people is yeah. it was almost like he kept bringing up what he'd done and it's almost like he's doing that because he's trying to paint a picture and he's trying to he's saying to his audience yeah this, look how bad Bo is and this guy's fucking always defended him you know and it's like I hate that shit. You know, mm-hmm. don't fucking hit me with that moralizing kind of bullshit, right? Like I've agreed it's bad. Yeah. But but you know. Well, no, you have to. Seems... You have it's it's all in or not. Like, see, this is the thing. Like the conversation that you had with Mike, to me, it just felt like Mike was trying to strong arm you into agreeing with him in public, which that seems to be his mo, kind of. You know, he does that kind of a lot. He he kind mm. of just goes into conversations and tries to make people agree with him in public, and if they don't, then he calls them names and threatens to beat them up with his noodle arms which you know wow don't underestimate the power of a noodle if you've ever been hit by a pool noodle you know it can hurt um, but, um yeah 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 no 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 you're right and um the things I, i've spoken to mike before and i was smaller back then i'd only really just started getting I meeting that. people I, I, yeah it's had a conversation with dario about our neoliberals left us which was a hilarious meme um and yeah he came in and was condescending and stuff but back then i guess you know I was still feeling out the space a bit, so I didn't really know what to, to make of Mike fully, and I was trying to figure it out. But but this time, you know, having seen how he engages with people, I was just like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll be civil, I'll be cordial, but I won't take it if he if he says something that I think across the line, I'll, I'll push back on it. You know, like when he tried to imply you're a big lover of dog piling. <laughs> like yeah, Where I think he was getting that mixed from? up with dog cum. <laughs> yeah. I think he was trying to say that 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 you like Stephen Crowder, a fine purveyor of dog cum. Well, well, yeah, exactly. And then when I said, "What do you mean?" He was talking about some. 
nothing got to do with me like what the yeah. fuck i think um, he was just trying thing. to pivot off like really hard i yeah, feel like yeah. i feel like he pretended that he was responding about the dog it sounded to me like he was trying to pretend that the dog piling comment was to something in his chat and he was really cringily trying to play it off but i don't know came off pretty cringe to me yeah yeah exactly like you know I, i'm not in, you know i have a pretty principled position about it that i'm not going to go on twitter you know tw twitter is a terrible place i think you know i both agree on this yeah, doing yeah, a call out post on twitter is, is not like necessarily the best way to go you you just end up creating a situation where it could get worse yeah, yeah. you know like even if i did make a call out post you know what if there's confusion we wouldn't know what's going on you know if if i was going to do anything i would i would message the guy and say hey this is what i think but mm. i don't fucking know him that'd be weird as fuck you know yeah. oh hey bro you don't know me but uh, actually could you do this shit Please, like, what yeah. the fuck? You know, I, I would do that if it, like, you know, if if a friend did something to step out of line yeah. on a personal level, I'd reach out to them. But other than that, I've got no obligation to do fucking anything for anyone. Like, what the fuck? One last like, question for you, real quick. Sure, sure. About yeah. this specific situation, we could talk about whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, what what do you feel about Mike? Uh, Mike going and trying to contact the victims. <sighs> do you know it's funny actually because I didn't, I didn't actually pick up on it in the conversation um, i only noticed it when you drew attention to it right um because yeah. obviously you know there's a, there's a lot going on and it was a very hostile kind of conversation um yeah, it was. but yeah like looking back on it now i mean yeah that's that's fucking weird like what who, you know you're not the police you're like what the, what the fuck that's like cop shit that's <laughs> really, it's mean? really weird how would you feel Let's uh, let's put yourself, and maybe this will be controversial, but let's put yourself in the position of somebody who's been the victim of human trafficking uh, a decade and a half ago. How would you mm. feel if Mike from PA uh, came in and was like, "Hi, I'd like to talk to you about Bo of the Fifth Column, also known as the guy who did a crime against you." <laughs> How would you feel about that? Would you feel comfortable <laughs> yeah, with that? No, I'd be like, well, who the fuck are you? Like, what are you? Why are you here? I'm kind of a you big know? deal on, um, <laughs> I'm kind of a big deal on, uh, tw political Twitch. <laughs> I just, um, I just thought it, you might like to know that somebody out there in the lefty sphere is thinking about, uh, victims like you. Now, could you please help me get some, cl some, some, um, clout, uh, by telling me that, uh, the person who did a crime against you, who you testified against in court and probably were victimized by, could you um, do me a favor and relive all of that so that I can get some clout on YouTube? That'd be great. Yeah, I'd probably be a bit like, you know, what what the fuck? Like, who are you? Why are you here? You know, <laughs> why are you dressed like that? Like, do you know what I, I mean? Know, hey, you look ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, obviously, I would just be like, yeah, this is like unnecessary you're bringing up old trauma you know like yeah. and, and the thing is as well like i don't you know these people could have could have been absolutely i don't know what their fucking situation is like you know like bad stuff happened to them but but were, were they like you know in, in like a cardboard box with like a fucking you know a hole in the a hole in the side being trafficked in on a fucking airplane like i, well, I no, don't know I mean, what, how badly the... they were affected the thing is, like, I mean, it, it was definitely super fucking exploitative. There's no excuses about that. Yeah, yeah, like, sure. This was, this was no, a no visa, visa fucking scheme. But it's like, again, it's a v I mean, like, I don't know. I don't know how many fucking, like, there are a lot of people who are in the mil. There's a lot of people who've been in the military in the past. Are we going to rule out every person who's ever done any bad thing ever in their past or any crime or even any exploitative thing like i mean what the fuck mm. like what if there was a what if there was like somebody who was like who went to prison for like fraud in the past and then like 10 years later they like fucking made something for them made something of themselves and were doing like art or something online and they were like talking about they were like fighting against some of the stuff that they're that made it possible for them to do those things. Like, like, I mean, I think that's one of the things that's overlooked. Like, it's not like Bo doesn't talk about these things. I don't know. Like, I've seen a few of Bo's videos. I don't watch, like, all of Bo's videos. I tend to like his videos, but I, I'm not, like, some sort of loyal subscriber. But I feel like mm. he's talked about some of these issues pretty seriously, and he's definitely, like, pushed back against, um, against Trump's immigration policies. Trump's immigration policies, which make stuff like what he used to do back in the day possible, and he's fighting against those things now. I don't know. Like, this seems like, like Mike is so desperate for clout that he's willing to throw somebody who actually did the right thing and is doing better and has reformed themselves 
under the bus. That's what it comes across as to me after a whole day of reviewing this stuff. Sure. I mean, it seems like you've looked into it, um, you know, in more detail than I have. I did, yeah. Um, but- yeah, sure. And then, so that's so, not yeah. like to say that you did anything wrong. I think you're. I think I'm sure your coverage was fine. I just, you know, how I am about this kind of stuff. When there's stuff like this, yeah, I always yeah, like course. to get all the receipts and whatever. Yeah, no, that's that's fair enough. I think that's that's you know valuable. Um, I, I guess I guess you know my kind of thing because I was I wasn't expecting to have a conversation with Mike. You know, I was literally just watching the video, expecting to watch the video, and then maybe look at the accusations in more detail, and then a conversation happened, and you know, yeah. kind of all blew up from there. Um, but but yeah, anyway, like. Yeah, like I, I don't know. Like it, it's kind of it's just kind of weird to me that he's so keen on this, and and like because I think this has been the thing before. Like I think Burroughs had to deal with these these mm-hmm. alleg- accusations before, and you know, yeah. I guess I guess that like one thing I'm sympathetic to is the idea that you have to keep addressing something that you've already addressed, or you know, hmm. has he addressed it fully? I don't know. My, my perspective is basically, and I. Th- if I, let's say I was Bo's publicist or whatever, mm-hmm. right? I would say, Bo, I think it would be worth you going into more detail in one video and specifically laying it all out so that you've got something to point to, you know? And I think yeah. that would probably be good. But again, like if he doesn't do that, like, you know, that's it just comes down to an individual choice of whether you want to, you know, support his work or not. But but the, the other point I make as well that I'm talking about is like, there's far worse people out there, okay? If you yeah. want to concern your time, go. you know, why are we not talking about like, Nick Fuentes or something like that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Why are we so focused on Burr of the Fifth Column? Well, yeah, you know, when, uh, it's weird. You know, it, it is very it weird. Is. Uh, and yeah, it, I don't it's, it's really get actually it. actually good. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. It's, it's kind of it's good. And you've got people on the right who are just doing the most egregious stuff. And it's like, well, go and have a word with them and their audiences or whatever, you know? But obviously people don't do that because it's easier to just punch left. It's easier, yeah, you know? And you I can, mean, and you also, know. you know, I think, I think Mike is kind of trying to... <laughs> suck up those little blood droplets you know the the clout th- the clout vampire thralls you know that the shit of like mm. licking up the scabs off the floor kind of stuff you know certainly feels like that to me <clears throat> yep. yeah yeah well, i mean you know I don't yeah know. well uh, uh, i think the, the, go ahead sorry. go ahead please go i was gonna say you know the final thing i was gonna say on it is you know it's up for the people to decide all the um you know not not on bow but like on, on mike from pa's sort of actions all the footage is out there, you know, obviously watch it all, come to your conclusions. I think that he was acting badly. To be honest, I think he was kind of treating me pretty shitty in that conversation. Oh, I think he treated yeah. you like shit. Yeah, personally. Yeah, I think he treated uh, you like you know. complete shit. Yeah. Especially in the back. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's your, your decision. You know, if if you do, do what you want to do, enjoy yourself. I don't know. That's what kind of it on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, Chud, it was great talking with you. Uh, I'm going to uh, finally end our increasing, incredibly long segment on the Bo versus Mike from PA uh, stuff after this. But I don't know if you've got any energy left in you, but I'm about to, I'm about to, I've, I've heard wind that uh, a, a certain proud boy who used to be on panels with us all the time has, uh, yes. it might be in the, might be, might be doing some time in the clink. <laughs> I, I saw this. Yeah, I, what, you know, I've been trying to sleep, but I've been in and out of sleep. Woke up leery eyed, opened Twitter because I'm addicted to it, and I see this stuff about him. I'm like, what's going on? <sighs> this fucking suspect. She's been arrested. Yeah. That's fucking insane. Ooh, ooh, no spoilers. No spoilers. Everybody, we're about to do that. Oh, sorry. No, it's all good. Oh, sorry, no, it's all good. Shit. Spoilers. Suspect sushi has been arrested, and we're about to get in on it. This is the guy. Oh, this guy's talked so much shit to me. Who? Wait, oh, we got a we got a clip for it. All right, Chud. Listen. Uh thank you so much for coming on. If my, you want to watch pleasure. this, you got it. If not, no worries. Thanks for coming on and talking about it. And um uh if you could just do the in the future, if you could just make sure to press the downvote button on all of both the fifth columns post and all of the upvote buttons on mine. Um if you don't, I'll beat you up in real life. All right. No worries. Okay, we'll do. Thanks See you so later, much. Chud. Okay, bye, bye for now. All right, that was fun.